your seat so we can uh, begin our session. <laughs> So, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies. Thank you very much for joining us here today on the first working session of the Human Dimension Implementation Meeting, the working session on fundamental freedoms, including freedom of expression, freedom of the media, and free information. Um, my name is Frane Marojevic. I'm the director of the Office of the OSC Representative on Freedom of the Media, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon's um, session. Um, I can already tell you that the um, lists for the speakers for the interventions um, later on is already full. We have reached the limit. Um, and I would like to remind you at this opportunity that uh, you can only take the floor in the capacity you have registered at this meeting, uh, just to be sure. So under the name of the organization or the entity you represent as it is uh, registered. Um, I would also ask you to try and put your interventions later on as concretely and uh, concisely as possible because we will have a limited amount of time for this session and we would like to give everybody an opportunity, a chance to speak. Um, if you want, it would be very helpful also if you have something ready made to give it to the interpreters already so that they can start working and thinking about it during your statement. It will be um, a little bit quicker and easier. So today's session uh, will start with an introduction, introduction by the new representative on freedom of the media, uh, Mr. Harlem Dazir, who was appointed um, in July of uh, this year. Prior to uh, this position, Mr. Dazir was the French uh, was the French Minister for European Affairs uh, since 2014. He also had a very long and distinguished political career, both as a member of the European Parliament and held various positions in the uh, European Parliament. But he's also very well known uh, that in, during the 1980s he founded uh, a French non-profit organization, SOS Racisme, uh, to fight combat racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of um, discrimination. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to our representative, Mr. Desir. Thank you, Franny. Dear Ambassador Clemence Coria, representing the Austrian Chairmanship, Excellencies, distinguished representatives of civil society, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you at the first working session of this Human Dimension Implementation Meeting. And it's an honor for me to take part for the first time to this meeting as representative on freedom of the media of the OSC. We are sure, with your collective knowledge and expertise here in this room, to take a thorough look to today at the situation of freedom of expression and media freedom in the OSC region. It is good to see how many of us came to Warsaw, representatives of government, human rights NGOs, intergovernmental organizations, media outlets, editors, journalists, and bloggers. But many who wanted to be here and who should be free to participate in our discussions are not with us today. Over 170 journalists cannot attend as they are in prison because of their critical writing. Hundreds of other journalists, media workers, and media freedom activists 
cannot attend because they currently face severe criminal charges or are intimidated by attacks and harassment for their work. Their voices are missing here. I have them in mind now in my first annual speech to the Human Dimension Implementation Meeting. Today is September 11 or 9-11. On this day, we all remember that 16 years ago, we have entered into a new world of threats and terrorism after the horrendous attacks in New York. A terrorism that also hit many journalists in the past years, and here I want to pay tribute to the editorial team and cartoonist of Charlie Hebdo in my country. But this year, 9-11 will not only be a day of remembrance, it also marks for the press the resumption of a major trial against journalists. And the paradox is that they are tried, accused of terrorism, while they have nothing to do with terrorism and are just doing their job. As we speak, 20 journalists and editorial board members from the daily newspaper Chumoyet stand on trial in Silivri near Istanbul. They are famous for their writings against authoritarian tendencies, speaking out in defending an open society. We know and value them for their critical analysis of developments in their country and abroad. They accused, six of them under arrest since 2016, now fi face prison sentences ranging from seven and a half to 43 years. One of them, Kadri Gersel, attending the HDIM only two years ago as a distinguished guest of my office. He spoke about the difficulties that journalism faced in this country and he urged for international attention to the immense pressure exercised on many of his fellow journalists in Turkey. Ironically enough, he was invited and spoke at the OSC expert workshop on engaging with the media in countering terrorism in Vienna in October 2009. Kadri Gersel, Ahmed Sheikh, and other prominent colleagues in prison, they symbolize the very values that we are protecting when combating terrorism. A democratic society, pluralism, free speech, the freedom to agree or disagree with others, including your government. In the past years, in some countries, journalists have been the double victims of terrorism. First, as direct targets of terrorists because they speak freely and refuse to give in to extremists. But also because the fight against terrorism, which is absolutely necessary, has led to disproportionate restriction of freedom of the media. Beyond the legitimate goal to protect safety of citizens and national security, some laws and rules aim not at terrorists, but at critical voices labeled as dangerous just because they are free. Let us repeat it here as clearly as my three predecessors, Fremut Duv, Miklos Arashti, and Dunya Miyatovic. The protection of freedom of expression is an essential element in our effort to fight terrorism. It is through guaranteeing media freedom and pluralistic public discourses through keeping our journalists free that the public can be alert and informed. Open and free media offer the space for the discussion of opinions. They uncover hidden tensions in societies that could otherwise escalate. They help to find solutions for challenges in a peaceful way. They hold government to account and help to establish the trust that public services need to succeed in governing safe and secure society we wish to live in. It is my strong belief that there, has no, there are no strong society with weak media. Ladies and gentlemen, we are facing hard times for freedom of the media. And sometimes participating states question the action of the representative on freedom of the media. I must recall that I act on the basis of the commitments taken by the OSC participating states themselves and the mandate they gave to me to observe, alert and promote their implementation. These commitments are strong and they are part of the comprehensive concept of security of the OSC in which freedom of the media is a contribution to peace, security, good relationship among the participating states. Participating states can be proud of these commitments but they have to be implemented. Let me recall their foundation, just to mention a few. In 1975, in the Helsinki Final Act, 
The government emphasizes the essential and influential role of media and journalists in our effort to understand each other and to build peace and cooperation in Europe and confidence between our people. In 1991 in Moscow, the country is committed that any restriction to freedom of expression need to be prescribed by law in accordance with international standards and conform to strict tests of necessity and proportionality. In 1994, in Budapest, the participating states condemned all attacks on and harassment of journalists and decided to, I quote, endeavor to hold those accountable who are directly responsible for such attacks. In 2004, in Sofia, the participating states agreed to take action to ensure that the Internet remains an open and public forum for freedom of expression and to foster access to the Internet. In 2014, in Basel, the countries have reaffirmed that freedom of information contributes to preventing and combating corruption and the financing of terrorism. These commitments all apply offline and online. It is my core responsibility to alert authorities when commitments may not be respected, and it remains the core responsibility of the authorities to hear this alarm and, whenever needed, to revise their approach. I stand here ready to work with you all to help designing changes for the better. My first priority, as I told this morning, will be the safety and protection of journalists and the fight to end impunity of crimes committed against them. When looking at the threats to media freedom, let me recall a few observations on the state of free media in the OSC region in the past years. Several journalists have lost their lives in connection with their work in the OSC region since the last HDM a year ago. Among them are Martin Koch in the Netherlands, Nikolai Andrushenko and Dmitry Popkov in the Russian Federation, and Swedish journalist Kim Wall in Denmark. The number of threats against individual journalists and also against media outlets reached a record high in 2016. Human rights NGOs have been sounding the alarm. According to the last annual report of Reporters Without Borders, several participating states have gone down in their world rankings. As already mentioned, over 170 journalists are in prison today. Over 90% of them are behind bars in Turkey on terrorism charges. They include Turkish and foreign journalists, as we ask and we ask for the release of Denis Yusel. Mesale Toulou and Lou Bureau, as well as for the release of the Chumoyet editorial team and other journalists in prison in Turkey. We also see a sharp increase of intimidation and harassment of female journalists. We continue to see a lack of progress in fighting impunity. In over 90% of the cases of violence against journalists in the OSC region, the perpetrators and masterminds know that they will manage to avoid facing justice. My second priority will be to protect media freedom in the new security context. I already spoke of the impact of 9-11 on media freedom in the OSC region. I can also add that recent overreaching surveillance effort, routinely justified in the name of national security and coercion by law enforcement to release confidential sources of media workers, also results in weakening investigative journalism. Anti-terrorism law adopted in an effort to increase national security, often include vague terms which are misused to restrict free expression and criminalize behavior arbitrarily identified as terrorist activity or extremism or endorsement of terrorism. I fully support the effort of governments to combat terrorism and create safer societies. But let me repeat this simple fact there are ways to achieve these goals without compromising on our hard fought fundamental freedoms. My third priority will be to engage governments and media professionals in the debate on the need to address threats of disinformation, fake news, propaganda, and hate speech. They affect trust and cooperation between and within our nations and endanger security. I am particularly worried when these negative phenomena are sponsored by governments through state-run media or by proxy. Fake news and propaganda are dangerous not only to the political climate, 
but also to the public trust in media and its readiness to protect media freedom. My predecessor called it a ugly scar on the face of the profession. We will continue the dialogue between journalists from Ukraine and Russian Federation, as well as a Cyprus dialogue between Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot journalists. My fourth priority will be to promote media pluralism in the OSC region through promoting best policy practices in rapidly digitizing media landscape and warning against illiberal approaches. As I already mentioned, technology have brought revo revolutionary changes in the media business and thus to the profession itself. Today, the competition among the media brought social media as the winners. This also results in unprecedented cuts in editorial offices, worsening working conditions for journalists, and the decline of traditional media, in particular in smaller towns and rural areas across the OSC region. There is also a crisis of, in understanding of the public service media and its role as a centerpiece of the media in democratic societies, allowing all voices to be heard, independent of commercial consideration. Public service media should remain financially sustainable and at the same time independent from governments and businesses as a model for other media. Further forms of limiting media pluralism including, include denying state advertisements to critical media outlets or other forms of exposing the media to economic difficulties. They have already resulted in weakening content pluralism in some of the participating states. Ladies and gentlemen, these four priorities will be discussed at the annual regional media conferences that my office will continue with the general help of the OSCE participating states. To implement my mandate, my dedication and that of my team will not be enough. My office relies on support from the authorities of the OSCE participating states and on the outstanding work done by civil society. Once again, I'm honored that I you are here with us today, and I wish to express my deep gratitude for your invaluable contribution to media freedom in our OSC region. I thank the governments of Austria, the Czech Republic, Germany, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and the United States for their important support with generous extra budgetary donations. Without this, we could not implement our projects that play an essential role in our efforts to improve media freedom in the region. In this regard, allow me also to emphasize that recent OSC chairs of Lithuania, Ireland, Ukraine, Serbia, Switzerland, Germany and Austria have kept media and internet freedom, safety of journalists and, uh, of journalists and pluralism high on our organization's agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, we defend media freedom because we know that without journalists, the world turns into a green place where the powerful can act as they wish and where the citizens have to be afraid. Instead, we need to work relentlessly and ambitiously and without ever giving up towards societies based on rights of people in a sustainable and peaceful development. In short, we have to make a living reality out of the OSC basic principle. That's what we are here for today, and that's what we intend to work for in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we have an opportunity to have speakers from the floor. I would like to um, remind everybody to stick to the topic and the theme of this session, which is freedom of expression, uh, freedom of the media and freedom of information, to try and present their points in a meaningful uh, and respectful manner. Um, we will be giving two and a half minutes per interventions, and I, fortunately I will need to be rather strict in order to ensure that everybody does have the freedom of expression to say what they would like to say, what they came here all the way to say. So I would uh, also urge you to be short, stick to the point, and respect the other people's right to their freedom of expression by giving them enough time. Um, I will try and give you some advance notice. So the first on my list is Red Star Media Holding. 
uh, which will be followed by the Commonwealth of Independent States Election Monitoring Organization. I don't know if the Red Star holding is already here. Yes, you have the floor, sir. Добрый вечер, уважаемые коллеги. Good afternoon. My name is Maxim Dodonov. I'm the uh, chief editor of Zvezda, television channel and news channel. I'd like to recall uh, something from the Russian press last week saying that uh, Russia was looking to uh, move in a number of directions discussing with uh, uh, members of the OSCE, but it's necessary to meet compromise along the way. Um, and that that way we could uh, it would be possible to work uh, between uh, mass media and amongst mass media. Now, the path to open pressure on journalists has gone really beyond the uh, what is considered normal and. Uh, international law, and this is something we see in a number of countries. We uh, see our, we see a number of colleagues working in the OSCE, uh, they do uh, a lot of work. Um, but as things stand at the moment, we've, we would echo what's been said by Mr. Desir that it's necessary to get answers, particularly with regard to uh, the non-release of Alexei Gorova, our colleague. Uh, in London today, there is an expression, uh, an exhibition of international uh, arms. This is something that uh, uh, the um, this is something that uh, is reflected by events around the world as well. The covering of such events uh, is something that cannot be covered in a number of countries. And um, despite that, there is a significant positive developments. There is consensus on protection of uh, monuments in Jalendor of Novi Sonche. Uh, that's very important because after the dismantling of monuments, uh, we've seen uh, grounds. For, well, we've seen the development of um, discussions uh, relating to monuments, relating perhaps to the fears of return of uh, Nazism, etc. And today, we have a situation where it's necessary to have an understanding of what is happening. I may ask you to wrap up. Uh, uh, yes, I will in a minute. Um, moving closer to home, Ukraine, I'd like to note that uh, here as well, there are difficulties. There's a blacklist of which has been claimed to contain uh, peacekeeping elements, but uh, we would like to know whether there's such a list exists. We'd like to get an explanation from our colleagues whether such a thing exists. And in closing, I'd like to invite Mr. Desir to Moscow so that he can discuss these issues with Mosc Muscovite journalists. Thank you very much indeed. And also as a reminder, if you would like to distribute longer statements, you can give them to the documentation desks and it will be distributed to all the participants as well. So uh, next on my list is, uh, as I said, Commonwealth of Independent States Election Monitoring Organization, followed by the delegation of the USA. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Alexei Simonov, and my report is dedicated to the issue of blocking Internet sites. And I would like to consider the case of Ukraine, because the Ukrainian president, P Petro Poroshenko, has been at the country's uh, most popular websites, search engines, and um, social networks. And one uh, the websites blocked are Vkontakte, uh, the largest social network in Europe, and the third uh, most popular uh, site in Ukraine. Mail.ru, the largest uh, Russian email service, and the fourth uh, most popular site in Ukraine, Yandex, a search engine company providing more than 50 different services, the fifth most popular site in Ukraine, Adnoklasniki, a social network, the, the means mo most popular site in Ukraine, and for example, Facebook is just number six uh, to compare. Um, and um, 
the blocking of social networks, search engines, um, email services, and news websites is contrary to the common understanding of uh, freedom of expression and freedom of, uh, freedom of uh, media. The blocking of Russian um, sites and social networks can be regarded as an attempt of uh, the Ukrainian authorities to control public discourse in Ukraine. Uh, such kind of bans affect um, the right uh, to receive information for millions uh, of Ukrainians and interfering with their personal and uh, professional lives. Uh, these actions of Ukrainian authorities have dealt a terrible blow to freedom of speech in the country. Um, so, <laughs> thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, and thank you for um, sticking to the time. Now I would like to give the floor to the delegation of the United States of America, which will be followed by the delegation of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The United States will submit a full statement for the record. We welcome our new representative on freedom of the media and look forward to his principled advocacy for freedom of expression online and offline. Journalists should never be targeted for their work. In Turkey, hundreds of journalists have been arrested and media outlets shuttered since the coup attempt. While we recognize the security challenges that Turkey faces, freedom of expression strengthens democracy and needs protection, even when that the speech is controversial or uncomfortable. We have grave concerns regarding terror terrorism-related charges against journalists, including employ employees of Jamhuriyet. In Azerbaijan, Memen Aliyev, editor of the country's last independent media country, Tehran, was released from detention this morning. However, we remain deeply concerned about restrictions on freedom of expression and the media, including the arrest of blogger Meman Husseinov and reported abduction of journalist Afghan Mortarli from Georgia. In Russia, a climate of impunity prevails. Since the last HDM, journalists Nikolay Andrushenko, Yevgeny Kam Kamaganov, and Dmitry Popov were all killed. Russia must investigate these murders. New laws prohibiting the use of VPNs and requiring messenger services to identify all users are chilling expression. In Russia occup occupied Crimea, there are politically motivated per prosecutions, such as that of Ukrainian journalist Mykola Semena, the imprisonment in Russia of activists Oleg Sentsov and Oleksandr Kolchenkos is just one tactic to quash dissent and intimidate Crimeans into self-censorship. We also condemn the detention of journalist Stanislav Asiev by Russian-led so-called separatists in the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic. In Belarus, Journalists, including Konstantin Zukovsky, are still being fined for illegal production and distri distribution of media con content. Access to information in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan remains highly restricted, with significant government control of the media. We welcome the long overdue release of Uzbekistan journalist Muhammad Bekjanov and hope the government will improve the media environment. Kazakhstan prosecutes individuals for exercising freedom of expression online and move the regulatory authority over telecommunications to the state security services. Kyrgyzstan has targeted media outlets critical of the government. Turkmenistan should accredit mem members of the international press and protect domestic journalists. We see backsliding on freedom of expression in some countries that were on positive trajectories. In Serbia and Macedonia, concerns include government interference and intimidation by officials. There's been a rise in attacks and harassment. We hope the political changes in Macedonia will improve the media environment. The closure of Hungary's leading opposition daily further diminished media pluralism. All regional newspapers have been acquired by pro-government oligarchs. I can, uh, ask you to come to the conclusion yes. time is right. Media plur plurality has been significantly weakened. Poland's parliament reportedly will consider legislation regulating the media. You Ukraine has made strides towards transparency and media ownership in the development of an independent public broadcaster. However, we remain concerned about journalists' safety. Freedom of expression is fundamental to any democracy. Upholding and promoting a free and open press is a fundamental value of the United States reflected in our Constitution. We welcome constructive discussion of our record here at HDIM. Thank you very much. Um, next on my list is the delegation of the Russian Federation, which will be followed by Political Movement Group uh, 24. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I think that we have to note yet again that the freedom of expression situation and freedom of the media in the OSCE region is unsatisfactory. We once again draw the attention of participating states to the unprecedented scale of violation of rights of Russian journalists that they are confronted with when carrying out their professional duties. In addition to the full um, closer, closure of Russian television and radio transmissions and uh, in, in the Russian language, uh, the authorities of Kiev uh, are continuing to expel representatives of Russian media from the territory of Ukraine. And this is usually done cynically in a loutish and barbaric manner. Just recently, on 30 August, the journalist of the first channel, Anna Gorbatova, was kidnapped in Kiev by the security services. She was charged with representing a threat to national security and sovereignty of the country. As it turned out, that the main claim was that uh, she refused to use the term Russian aggression, which, of course, is an misunderstandable term anyway. Previously, uh, two journalists uh, of the BGTRK, Maria Knyazova and Tamara Nersesian, were expelled from the territory of Ukraine. Uh, they, their private um, properties and documents were taken away. And they were taken uh, in the darkness of night uh, to a border point, and they had to cross the border on foot. Uh, and now, the, so representatives of Russian and Russian language media are treated like criminals. Uh, and this is not resulting in any criticism on the part of international specialized institutes and human rights defense organizations. Neither is there an, an attempt by Ukrainian authorities uh, to uh, investigate uh, these cases uh, and to bring uh, people uh, to justice uh, when that occurs. And it's quite clear that the light touch approach uh, of international uh, structures uh, is uh, um, support for Ukrainian civil servants. Uh, and uh, it is a really just a question of um, purposeful harassment of representatives of the Russian Federation in all spheres of uh, activity, not just journalists. Uh, on the blacklist in Ukraine, you can also find representatives of the artistic uh, uh, intelligentsia. And this is obviously a violation of Ukrainians' commitments under the International Convention of 1965 on the elimination of Russian of racial discrimination. Uh, we have these uh, black lists of hostile media published by Propastop in Estonia. And uh, the, creations, uh, the creators of Propastop have stated that this is being done in order to help the community to reveal and denounce anti-Estonian propaganda. Uh, and uh, this uh, overall hostile approach uh, to Russian language media can also be found in Moldova, Latvia, and Lithuania. And we call upon the executive structures of the OSCE to pay careful attention to the violation of the rights of Russian journalists uh, and to halt the vicious practice of cleansing of the information space of any mass media that are not convenient to the authorities. I'm just, I'm just waiting for the interpreters to uh, finish, sorry, to give a little break mm -hmm. to catch up. So next uh, on the list is Political Movement Group 24, which will be followed by Belarusian House in Warsaw, if you can get ready after. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Safarov Liajun is my name. I represent Group 24, Citizens Movement of the Russian Federation, and I'm also a member of the regional social organization, uh, Tajikistan Youth for uh, Tajikistan Development. Um, we have limited time, so I can't go into great detail here. Um, but I will try to summarize. Uh, we have gathered here today to talk about uh, the fundamental values uh, that are so important here. Uh, the freedom of expression in today's world determines the level of development 
of a society or a state. A state is judged by human rights and democratic standards. And that's why today many countries in the world attach great importance to the full respect of human rights. And on this list of rights, one of the most important is the right to freedom of expression, which implies people's right to express what they think. That's a fundamental right, and if it is not respected, it's really not possible to develop a democratic society and democratic values. It is not an absolute right, the freedom of expression. It has to be used without <clears throat> being used as a justification for violence, slander, or abuse. It needs to be used along with other human values and enable a, a very human society. In the last century, a lot of progress has been made in protecting human rights, including the freedom of expression. Universal principles and mechanisms for their protections have been established. And there are today a number of international instruments, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the European Convention on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. However, Despite such a broad range of instruments to protect freedom of expression in the modern world, there are still countries where these rights are not respected, where they are not developed. And this is particularly characteristic of countries oh, Thank you. In any case, what I would emphasize here as I emphasized above, is that time is short and uh, the difficulties um, that we have, the pain that we feel is something that we wanted to communicate to the international community today, um, to the Russian Federation, to the uh, European Union, Canada, the USA, to really pay particularly pay particular attention to this question. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, next on the list it will be the Belarusian House in Warsaw, which yeah. will be, which will be followed by the Human Rights Center Public Legal Aid. Please. Belarusian House in Warsaw. No. Okay. So, if uh, I could then uh, give the floor to the Human Rights Center Public Legal Aid. Good afternoon. My name. Uh, I am the director of the Human Rights Center Public Legal Aid in Belarus, uh, and we're registered in Kiev because we have been banned for the last eight years in Belarus. Uh, today, I'd like to say that in Belarus uh, uh, it's not just journalists who are subject to harassment but also bloggers. Uh, you've heard uh, perhaps about uh, decree number three about forced labor, uh, that many people uh, demonstrated and the state media didn't cover those demonstrations and uh, so people started to spread information about this uh, through social networks, uh, through bloggers. Maxim Filipovich, a well-known blogger, was uh, discriminated against and harassed. Uh, he was kept without charges, detained without charges for 30 days. He was beaten and he was uh, subject uh, to very heavy fines. Uh, as a lawyer, I can say that this is being done to prevent bloggers uh, from disseminating information, information that the man in the street in Belarus really needs. The citizen needs that information. Um, but this is a sort of a new technique uh, by the Belarus authorities uh, because uh, they uh, find it uh, uh, difficult uh, to uh, attack uh, bloggers uh, as journalists. Uh, so there's been a trial in this regard which for the 
time being we've won, but uh, this uh, will result, no doubt, in harassment of other bloggers. Uh, these bloggers often represent uh, youth group initiatives, uh, and uh, uh, if uh, they are purely interested in youth issues with a million followers who like their music, then they're left alone. But if they become political, then they are subject to such harassment. Uh, there were attempts uh, by the administration to prevent uh, bloggers from using YouTube, for instance, to disseminate information. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much for sticking to the time. Uh, next to my list, on my list is uh, Sweden on behalf of the European Union, and it will be followed by uh, Wiener Akademikerbund. And if I ask the civil society representatives who have finished their interventions on who are not yet ready on the list to give up a seat so that uh, people who are on the list can take the seat next. So thank you very much, Sweden, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I'm honoured to speak on behalf of the European Union and its member states, as well as on behalf of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Montenegro, Albani, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Norway. This list is not final. A full list will follow on the written uh, version of the statement at a later stage. Now, freedom of expression is crucial for our common security and remains a top priority for the European Union. We warmly welcome the new representative uh, on freedom of the media, uh, Monsieur Arlem Désir, and thank his team for their excellent continuous work. Monsieur Désir, uh, freedom of expression is more at a danger now than it has been for a long time. This makes your autonomous role and fearless voice all the more important. Your strong and flexible mandate must be preserved and your budget safeguarded. Regrettably, we see a continued trend towards infringements of freedom of expression and opinion. The European Union has raised specific concerns in this regard over the past year in inter alia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, the Russian Federation, Tajikistan, Turkey, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. We once again call on all participating states to fully respect their international commi commitments, to reverse violations and to enable rather than restrain independent voices. The EU remains committed to addressing our own shortcomings and working with the representative and call on all participating states to do the same. Let's highlight a few specific situations where urgent steps need to be taken. As Arlem Désir has already reminded us, in Budapest in 94, participating states agreed to hold all those responsible for attacks and harassments against journalism, journalists to account. Nevertheless, intimidations, threats and attacks on journalists and media workers, as well as impunity for such acts, continue to have a chilling effect on freedom of the media and free expression in parts of our region, nurturing self-censorship and silence and thereby depriving society of an open and informed public debate. The EU has raised concerns regarding the intimidation of journalists, for example, those working in the Russian news newspaper Novaya Gazeta, following the reporting on human rights violations in Chechnya, the recent deaths of the journalists Dmitry Popkov and Nikolai Andrushchenko, and the disappearance of blogger Stanislav Avseyev. In Crimea and Sevastopol, illegally annexed by Russia, and in the parts of eastern Ukraine, controlled by Russia-backed separatists, enforced disappearances, harassment, and threats of journalists and persons speaking out against the de facto authorities contribute to the culture of fear and silence. Excessive anti-terrorism or anti-extremism legislation is also used to silence dissenting voices. In Turkey, imprisonment of journalists continue. We are deeply concerned by the forced closure of hundreds of media outlets and the imprisonment of more than 160 journalists, including the Welt correspondents Denis Yuchel and French journalist, journalism student Lou Bureau. We are closely following the indictment um, against... If I can just point sure. out that we are running out of time. All okay. right. I wanted to mention Chumburiet um, and uh, on Azerbaijan, very briefly, we reiterate our deep concern with the recent crackdown there. Uh, we take note uh, of the fact that this morning the head of the Turan press agency, Mehmet Aliyev, was released, but we regret that he's still under house arrest. Uh, we uh, consider that Azerbaijan stands out in the region, reports of ill treatment in detention engrave this concern. In full, the situation for freedom of expression and media in Central Asia remains deeply disturbing. We 
are closely following the media freedom situation as well in countries of the Western Balkans, where intimidation and harassment of journalists and media workers remains a problem, as well as the lack of independent media. The EU acknowledges the willingness of Ukraine to work with the representative of the freedom of the media, however, that more needs to be done by its authorities. Disinformation campaigns, I don't have time to go uh, into uh, now. How much time do I still have? We've run out of time. We I'm ran sorry. out of time. <laughs> All right, very well. So, A full statement with concrete examples and concrete recommendations for actions for participating states will be distributed in writing later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So, uh, as I said, next on my list is the Wiener Academica Bund, which will be followed by uh, Human Rights uh, Vision. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Henrik Clausen from Denmark, representing Wiener Academica Bund, where I have been a proud board member for several years. First, let me uh, congratulate the new representative for media freedom. We were very encouraged by his comments this morning and hope he will continue principled work that puts freedom first uh, to, as, to abolish as many regulations and restrictions as possible. Today, I shall focus on the talk, topic of so-called fake news that easily becomes smear campaigns and propaganda for war and hatred. Once such campaigns are started, they can be very difficult to stop. But there's an end. let me tell you the secret antidote to fake news. It's the truth. The truth as told by free citizens in a free society. No state arbiter of right and wrong is really needed. Just the right of anyone to express what they hold to be true. One famous fake news is the conspiracy theory that Russia somehow hacked the American election. Oft repeated in the old media, this story became propaganda for war and hatred and led to severe international tension. Only new media analyzed the facts properly to conclude that the Russia hacking story had no substance. At the Academica Bund, we have deep confidence in man's desire for truth and reason. We believe in a free marketplace of ideas, the freedom is the, that freedom is the right way to deal with fake news. And we do need that the authorities protect this freedom, including the freedom to say silly or false things. Thus, the Wiener Academica Bund recommends that OSE gives hate speech a clear and legally workable definition, that OSE participating states scale back subsidies of old media in order to create a more level playing field for media, that OSE participating states focus on protecting freedom of expression as such for all topics. And finally, we call upon the OSE uh, representative for freedom of the media to clearly state that publishing the truth can never constitute hate speech or be a punishable offence. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, and perfectly on time. Um, so next on my list, as I said, is Human Rights Vision, which will be followed by the Human Rights Watch. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Let me first of all, on behalf of Human Rights Vision Foundation, to thank OSCE Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights for organization of annual Human Rights and Democracy Conference. In Tajikistan, the situation on freedom of expression, freedom of media and information for the last period has been considerably worsened. There is no any platform for public expression of opinions in the country. National media is controlled by the government, while non-governmental information sources who are trying to honestly inform the civil society about the situations happening in the country are subject to tough pressure from the state authorities' side who create the condition in which the activities of non-governmental media become not possible. It's almost impossible for independent mass media to obtain any information from the state authorities of Tajikistan. The only possible official source is the data of National Information Agency, Hovar. This activity is totally controlled by the government. Moreover, in order to control mass media, the government introduced into force a resolution obliging all mass media to coordinate their publications with the National Information Agency. 
Censorship of printed and electronic media is monitored by State Committee for National Security and Ministry of Culture. Terms and conditions for registration of newly establishing mass media have significantly deteriorated. The registration authority of mass media requires to obtain a certificate from State Committee for National Security, who has been entitled also to approve or prohibit the importation of printing equipment. One of the examples of the control over mass media is forced winding up of social and political publication NIGOH in 2016, which had been publishing weekly newspaper, newspaper in Tajik for over 10 years from 2006. Following the newspaper NIGOH, the independent news agency Toj News stopped it, its activity. In the annual index of freedom of media published by Reporters Without Borders on April uh, 2017, Tajikistan takes the 149th place. On behalf of Human Rights Vision Foundation, we appeal to the government of Tajikistan not to restrict the activities of independent media, to stop harassment and intimidation of independent journalists for their professional activity, to provide an opportunity for the people of the country to have access to alternative sources of, in of information without fear, and thereby to guarantee you, uh, the to fulfillment of obligation entrusted the government of Tajikistan by international legal acts concerning the freedom of expression. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Uh, next uh, is the Human Rights Watch, which will be followed by the International Public Fund Russian Peace Foundation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we welcome the appointment of Mr. Alam Desir as OSCE representative of, on media freedom. We urge all member states to respect his independence and expertise and are looking forward to working with him on how to tackle the real problems of incitement to racial hatred and violence within the framework of respecting freedom of expression. In Azerbaijan, we are relieved to hear that uh, uh, Mehman Aliyev was allowed to go home, but the bogus charges against him remain. We therefore urge the authorities to drop all charges against him and allow to run news agency to operate without undue interference. Um, other cases which are well known include uh, the abduction of Afghan, Afghan Murtarli in Tbilisi uh, after he was uh, after which he was uh, appearing um, to have been brought in illegal cross-boarding at the border uh, and charged. Uh, another case of importance is the conviction of Mehmad Husseinov, who was convicted to two years in jail for allegedly defaming police chiefs after he after de publicly described the violence he faced in the hands of the police. Turkey has become the world leader in jailing journalists. There are currently at least 171 in jail. As we speak, uh, the, uh, there are, um, as, as we speak, sorry, um, the daily newspaper Shurumiet is having a trial hearing uh, in Turkey. Uh, we call for the journalists to be released. That includes uh, Murat Sabunchu, the journalist Ahmed Chik, Kadri Gursal, and Chairman Akun Atalay. Other journalists currently detained in Turkey include Shahin Alpay, Ali Bulac, Najle Elechak, Ahmed Turan, Alkan, and Matamzer Turkone. Other journalists also include uh, Ahmed Altan, uh, his brother Mehmet Altan, as well as the German-Turkish journalist Deniz Yuchel. In uh, uh, Uzbekistan, the release of Mohamed Bekjanov, one of the world's longest imprisoned journalists, is a relief, but many others remain in detention. In Kazakhstan, uh, Jambolat Mamai, editor of what was Kazakhstan's few remaining critical newspaper, was released a few days ago following a politically motivated trial, but was convicted and barred from practicing journalism for three years, another form uh, of uh, stifling uh, critical voices in the country. The invocation of recently adopted legislation interfering with media freedom in Russia led to the prosecution of dozens of people on criminal charges, both for comments on social media and offline. In recent months, Ukraine's government had, has taken several steps to restrict freedom of expression and media freedom. Most recently, the detention of and expulsion of several foreign journalists for allegedly engaging in anti ukrainian propaganda has undermined Ukraine's commitment to freedom of expression. Threats to media freedom should also be taken very seriously if I within. Can, uh, remind you, the time has run out. So within the EU, up. including Poland and Hungary, most recently, a website close to the Hungarian government published a list of enemy journalists, calling them George Soros foreign propagandists. 
to conclude, journalists are increasingly under working under a, a hostile environment. OSCE participating government have a responsibility to help hold the principle of the organization and respond seriously to, to situations that we have been discussing today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. As I said, next will be the International Public Fund Russian Peace Foundation and it will be followed by the International Humanist and Ethical Union. So. Microphone. Thank you. Uh, the freedom of expression of the media has taken on a, a new dimension. Uh, the Russian media has, in Ukraine has been talked about a lot, and the uh, sluggish reaction to it from the OSCE as well. I hope very much that the new representative for uh, the media will take a stronger position on this question. It's a serious issue. The election of Trump led to an understanding that the citadel of freedom of the press no longer was the United States. The U.S. has taken upon itself the role of giving lectures to others while at the same time uh, we see contradictions in the U.S. itself. On television every day, the high audience uh, level programs uh, speak out against uh, the existing situations. It couldn't be in Europe, it could be in the U.S., could be RRT. Uh, the giving the screen time to opponents is something that is important and that's something that we see in Russia. On NTV we see a number of Poles, Ukrainians, even American journalists who get screen time. <clears throat> On a number of issues. So those who criticize Rus Russia for not respecting the freedom of expression of the media are simply giving rise to a, an impression of hypocrisy. Uh, we are seeing an emergence of a new situation, but uh, the impact of this is that it will have a, a boomerang effect which will go counter to the direction that things need to take. Um, as I said, next on the list will be the International Humanist and Ethical Union, which will be followed by uh, Turkmenistan Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights. Thank you. As was reaffirmed by the previous OSC representative on freedom of the media, freedom of expression is a prerequisite to prevent and counter violent extremism and radicalization that leads to terrorism. Despite this, the right to express oneself freely has too often been pitted against security concerns and fears of terrorism instrumentalized so as to silence those who do not subscribe to the majority view. There are concerning examples from across the OSC region, but I should like to highlight some Central Asian states where specifically non-verbal expressions of personal belief have been subjected to illegitimate curtailment over the past few years. There has been a forceful crackdown on sartorial expression of women. In some regions of Tajikistan, hijab blacklists have been drawn up, shops selling the garments closed down, and the state has ordered that and harassed Muslim women to tie headscarves in the Tajik way. In Uzbekistan, authorities are removing headscarves from women in devailings, and reportedly special units have been formed and tasked with finding and detaining women wearing the hijab. In Kazakhstan, laws have been drafted banning clothing perceived as overtly religious. There have also been reports of forced beard shavings in Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Much of the discourse and explicit reasoning for these crackdowns is rooted in concerns about Islamic militancy. Uh, 
There is growing unease across the region about rising Islamic radicalism. However, governments have been consistently... Um, if I may interrupt you, I think yes. we are on freedom of religion as a main topic. We are here on freedom of expression. No, I, I mean, I, I, I guess the whole point of my um, statement is that it's a manifestation of expression. The two can be conflated and they're very much to inter up to they the interpretation are, there of is, the... There is a separate session on freedom of religion, so... I know there is, yeah. but I, I, I see these ways of expressing oneself mm -hmm. sartorially as a, an issue of expression that the special rep the representative should be concerned with. Okay. Um, if, if it's not appropriate, I can stop, but um, I very much... If you, but if you can get on to the point of freedom of expression, I'll be very happy to give you the floor. Um, it is unclear how state officers can claim to legitimately attribute specific intentions to those wearing beards and hijabs when they're grounded in speculation about their symbolic meaning. meaning. That beards and headscarves can be supported for a variety of reasons, including but not limited to religious beliefs, only amplifies the subjectivity and dangers around any attempt to curtail this form of expression. As the OSC representative on freedom of the media points out, free expression can play a critical role in promoting equality and combating intolerance. We urge the governments of the Central Asian states concerned to encourage, not hinder, free expression of belief so that an environment of debate, inquiry and tolerance can be fostered. Where such states might be in doubt, we recommend the UN OHCHR Rabbit Plan of Action in helping clarify the scope of state obligations on prohibiting incitement to violence, hostility and discrimination whilst maintaining the right to free expression of its citizens. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, next on the list is the Turkmenistan Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights, followed by the rights and freedoms of Turkmenistan's citizens. Good afternoon. It's been uh, 10 years now since uh, Obasapar Muradov, a Turkmenistan a journalist, uh, was killed in a barbaric manner. Despite uh, that long period of time, the perpetrators are not behind bars. Uh, and um, this um, gross uh, violation of human rights uh, was criticized by the authorities. And yet, uh, in the 10 years uh, since uh, that uh, brutal murder, uh, not much has been done and virtually all citizens' uh, rights are being violated uh, and in particular uh, the right to freedom of expression and freedom of the media. For uh, 20 years now Turkmenistan has been a signatory to the International uh, Covenant on Civil and Political Rights uh, uh, and uh, uh, the international uh, community is just observing the fact that Turkmenistan is not in a position to ensure freedom of the media. Uh, the uh, Sapar Mamedov Neskoliev uh, is behind bars uh, from uh, Radio Svoboda. Uh, Sergei Magoliev uh, is another example, a, a co correspondent of uh, uh, the radio. Uh, and many other individuals, Sultan uh, Alcilova was um, uh, thrice, uh, in fact, attacked, attacked physically, uh, and just recently she was uh, once again subject to uh, physical and psychological uh, harassment. Uh, uh, and each time she was attacked, uh, the attackers uh, would shout that she was uh, anti-patriotic. Uh, and um, uh, the special services uh, are, according to her, behind that. Uh, there are other activists, uh, people who are trying to get in touch with international organizations and to show what is happening in Turkmenistan are also subject to harassment and intimidation in many, many countries, including those represented here, um, pr uh, prefer diplomacy with Turkmenistan because of its natural resources, and they ignore freedom of the media there, or lack of it. Thank you very much. Um, next on the list is the rights and freedoms of Turkmenistan citizens, and it will be followed by the organization Franco-Egyptian uh, for Le Droit de l'Homme. 
Dear friends, I'm from Turkmenistan. I was in prison for six years, uh, including in the concentration camp of Adandipa, where I was uh, prisoner number three in cell number four and in a uh, special part of the concentration camp for former civil servants. Uh, now, the uh, previous uh, speaker has already talked about uh, the general situation in Turkmenistan. I would fully agree with this. Uh, but there is a general trend. Even in the time of the Soviet Union, when I, uh, for instance, uh, uh, was uh, uh, dealt uh, dealing with uh, the liquidation of uh, the tradition of selling horses for meat. This was uh, a part of our culture. And then Niyazov became the president. And then, uh, at least until 1995, you could write about certain things. You could share information with fellow citizens. But as soon as uh, Turkmenistan received its uh, neutrality status, uh, uh, Berdi Muhammadov uh, is uh, sim following the same situation where there's just lip service uh, being paid to the rule of law. When I was in prison, my uh, wife uh, invited a French television company called the Galaxy Press uh, um, and uh, Osapar, mentioned by the previous speaker, um, cooperated with them and she lost her life. But Galaxy Press was invited into my home while I was in prison. And uh, once uh, uh, this was uh, revealed, despite the presence of OSCE employees, I was uh, uh, secretly uh, moved from a general regime prison uh, to a concentration camp in Avadan de Paix. Uh, I had been sentenced uh, for negligence. Uh, and uh, and despite the fact uh, that uh, there were all of these obstacles, uh, the film saw the light of day. My wife uh, wasn't afraid to say in public on the film that her husband was uh, uh, illegally uh, imprisoned. And we find when we were finally liberated uh, two years ago, only then did we learn that uh, the film had been shown, but uh, those who shot the film agreed to a compromise, and there's uh, uh, nothing said about that. But so when it comes to the media, there are no media in Turkmenistan. It is really the worst example of the muzzling of the media and of NGOs in Turkmenistan. You can't compare that to any other country. Thank you very much. Um, now it's the organization for Franco-Egyptian La Drade de Homme and then uh, followed by the Legal Media Center. And if I could ask some of the civil society speakers who have already finished and completed their interventions to give the floor to others who are still awaiting. Thank you very much. Sir, you have the floor. The West has been uh, severely affected by the terrorist attacks in the last three years. 39 attacks, 361 dead, 1568 wounded. No country is, prey, is, is spared. Charlie Hebdo, Hyper Kasher, Bataclan, France, Copenhagen, Brussels, Charleroi, Nice, Moscow, Berlin, St. Petersburg, Stockholm, Manchester, London, Hamburg, and recently Barcelona, Cambridge, and Turkey in Finland. Anti terrorist measures are welcomed, but the Western world must work to eradicate the source of the expansion of the ideology of death. The war on terrorism will not be achieved only by arms and the number of policemen, but above all by modification of religious thought and ideology. To do this, the West must accompany the measures of Al-Azhar, the Rome of Islam, the highest authority of Sunni Islam. Al-Azhar is unable to respond to Egyptian President Sisi request to reform religious education and avoid exporting extremist ideologies. One of al Azhar's responses is his recent proposal of a bill against hatred. This is not an effective measure. Creating more laws will divert attention to futile discussions. Any pretext of freedom of expression 
creativity, information will not escape from this law if adopted. The law pretends to protect society from attempts to inculcate false ideas of religion that incite hatred and discrimination, but at the same time prevents discussion in public debate in the media or on, on any controversial doctrinal issues. At first sight, it appears as a serious attempt to counter extremist ideology, but it isn't because the Egyptian constitution provides for all these ideas, because the provisions done do not condemn ISIS, but they restrict the freedom of opinion, creativity, and the debate on Islamic heritage and the religious discourse. This bill, together with other articles added to the penal code uh, that innovators, thinkers, and researchers call for their repeal concerning blasphemy and contempt of religions. Al-Azhar must immediately begin to change its programs and modify its teaching manuals, which contain hundreds of facts on which extremists refer for their ideas and terrorist plans. In conclusion, the West and the countries of the OSCE should encourage Al-Azhar. This should not be limited to listening to its invited representative in Europe, which is translated only by unnecessary speeches on tolerance, photos, interviews, and declarations. This encouragement can be realized by cooperation, by forming a serious commission to follow up the religious reform demanded by the Egyptian people through a clear request of the President of Egypt. Changes must be concrete with measurable effects that will have a direct impact for halting terrorism in the West. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, next is the Legal Media Center, which will be followed by the delegation of Spain. Mm -hmm. Diana Kremova. Diana Kremova. Yeah, I'm, from, I'm from Kazakhstan. My organization protects the rights of uh, journalists. And I'd like to thank the IOC for giving us the opportunity to speak and uh, the support we've received on a number of initiatives for civil society in Kazakhstan. I'm going to keep it brief, focusing on three particular points which are very topical. The first is the um, prosecution of a journalist, the uh, chief editor of Tribune, for example. Uh, three years has been in, is the sentence, uh, but what's worst is that the newspaper has been closed. Uh, secondly, the uh, criminal article uh, on uh, inciting um, religious uh, social um, discord, and this is an article which is used to prosecute more and more people each year. 20 people last year, uh, 12 of which were condemned to prison sentences. And we're seeing an increasing trend. The cause for such cases are generally bloggers posting on social media. So this is a dangerous article. Um, it's, there's very little concrete evidence required for uh, bringing a case of inciting social discord. Uh, quite often, the cases are political in nature, and um, it's very difficult uh, to actually look into the causes behind the use of this article. The third uh, point is the amendment to the Code on Mass Information being initiated by our ministry, um, going from issues such as protection of children um, social protection of social spaces, pace, places, um, but uh, the means used to achieve this are limitation of the freedom of expression, um, the, um, for example, the amount of time that information can be held by the uh, government from three to fifteen days. We. There is a working group on this. The process in Parliament is underway. We don't want these amendments to go through. And I would urge the OSCE and other international organizations to urge Kazakhstan to observe international standards and not make changes to the law on the media, which would limit freedom of expression. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we'll give the floor to a delegation of Spain, which will be followed by Amnesty International. Ambassador. Thank you very much indeed. 
My delegation would like to identify itself with the statement made by Sweden on behalf of the European Union, and we'd like to raise matters of uh, national concern at the moment. I'd like to uh, begin by welcoming the new representative for the freedom of the media, a role more important today than ever before. The fundamental freedom uh, which you are now responsible for protecting need to be fully protected in the region of the OSCE, and you can support, you can rely on the support of my country. Guaranteeing the safety of journalists is an issue which Spain attaches particular importance to. Spain has proposed the creation within the United Nations of a position for the protection of journalists in armed conflicts. And we would join with reporters' associations in recognizing that quite often the first victim of conflict is truth. Journalists are our eyes and ears in wars. And many try to eliminate journalists from the from these situations so that the truth is not known. And because of that, they deserve special protection. Freedom of expression is something that this organization has been focusing on throughout the year. And I'd like to congratulate the Austrian chairmanship for the organization in Vienna of the high level conference on the freedom of media in the Western Balkans, which have provided a useful useful conclusions on protecting uh, the freedom of the media in this area and throughout the OSC as a whole. Freedom of expression is a fundamental human right, and it's our fundamental duty not only to respect this right, but to protect it as well. When we talk about the freedom of the media, what we need to do is guarantee conditions which allow journalists to do their job in conditions of freedom and safety. I'd also like to emphasize another issue which is of particular concern for my delegation, which is that of hate speech and how we fight that. We follow closely the work of the international organizations and the European Union on this, um, strengthening, the, um, strengthening the sentences of hate speech which is motivated by racism, anti-Semitism, uh, grounds of religion, ethnicity, or, or uh, nationality. So protection against hate speech is essential. We need to raise awareness of this issue, uh, particularly amongst the youth and those of school age, and protect them against the uh, hate speech they might come across on the internet. I'd like, in closing, to welcome the opportunity to hear about the practices of other countries and civil society in the area of freedom of expression. And we are looking forward to working with the representative of freedom of the media, hoping to achieve improvements in this area, working side by side with other states. Thank you. The Amnesty International, followed by the delegation of Ukraine. Um, good afternoon, moderator and delegates participants. Uh, I deliver this statement on behalf of Amnesty International. Amnesty International would like to draw the attention of the authorities of Kazakhstan and OEC participating states to a number of concerns about violations of freedom of expression in Kazakhstan. Amnesty International has documented that the right to freedom of expression came under renewed attack in Kazakhstan in recent years. The authorities have worked to take social media under control as a space where people previously could exercise their right to express critical political opinions, seek and receive information, and organize peaceful protests. This has involved using long-standing long as well as newly adopted legislative powers to temporarily or permanently shut down or block access to individual online resources. In addition, authorities in Kazakhstan used administrative and criminal sanctions against people for peacefully exercising their right to freedom of expression online on a larger scale than in previous years. This included administrative sanctions against social media users, closing down independent media outlets for using social media to publish their materials, and the abuse of the criminal justice system to prosecute those who criticize state policies and seek to organize demonstrations through the social media, including the imprisonment of human rights defenders Max Bakayev and Talgat Ayan, 
Amnesty International considers Max Bakayev and Talgat Ayan prisoners of conscience, persecuted solely for peacefully exercising their rights to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. We call for their immediate and unconditional release. Amnesty International would also like to use this opportunity to, dr to draw your attention uh, to Article 274 of the Criminal Code of the Republic of Kazakhstan, which makes dissemination of information known to be false a criminal offense. This includes material disseminated over the Internet. A person convicted under Article 274 can face up to 10 years imprisonment. Article 274 has particular implications for journalists, several of whom have faced persecution under this article. Alongside the criminalization of defamation in Kazakhstan and the, in the context of widespread violations of the right to a fair trial, the threat of persecution under Article 274 makes journalists worry of reporting on sensitive issues, in particular if they are unable to verify every single fact of a case. Amnesty International calls on the Kazakhstani authorities to repeal Article 274 of the Criminal Code. Human rights and fundamental freedoms are key to the OSCE's comprehensive security concept. concept. Amnesty International calls on the participating states to invoke the Moscow mechanism to establish an ad hoc mission of independent experts to examine violations of the right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly in Kazakhstan. Thank you for your attention. Good. Thank you very much. As I announced, now the floor will be uh, you, uh, delegation of Ukraine, followed by the delegation of Austria. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine today is facing the harsh war in Donbas and occupation of Crimea by Russia with the consequence of violation of hundreds of international and bilateral agreements with Ukraine, thousands of deaths, political prisoners, kangaroo courts, and at the end, an attempt to eliminate any possible freedom in my country. Ukraine today has been also thwarted by a quite modern weapon, information warfare. Ukraine uh, is really fighting against this and trying to uh, find the recipe on, uh, trying, on Russia's trying to occupy the consciousness of the citizens of Ukraine. When the media, Russian control media, uh, fake produced by Russian media, puppet journalists are used for the occupation of consciousness, justification of crimes and violation of international law, deformation of the history and identities, creating myth and interfering policies of other states. Yes, this is modern Russia that occupied Ukrainian towers, transmitters, frequencies, TV and radio frequencies to broadcast propaganda in Crimea and Donbass. Yes, this is modern Russia that today sentenced the Ukrainian citizen and friend of my family, Artem Chigos, for, for eight years of strict regime colony just for the protecting the territorial integrity of his own country. It is modern Russia that in July 2017 sentenced a Crimean Tata, Emil Minasov, to a year and a three month of imprisonment for allegedly disseminating extremist materials in the social media with no clarification what kind of extremist materials was this. It is modern Russia that on August 8, 2017 arrested 76-year-old Crimean Tatar activist Servier Karametov, who spent 10 days in the prison and was fined just for being a one-man picketer with the slogans, Mr. Putin, Crimean Tatars are not terrorists, and Artem Chigos and our children are not terrorists. And it is modern Russia that artificially creates the image of the Ukrainian citizens like terrorists, radicals, Nazis, uh, nationalists, spies, and state enemies. And there are several victims of this uh, hate speech. Mikola Semena, Roman Sushenka, Stanislav Aseyev, and many, many others, like political prisoners, over 40 political prisoners in Crimea and Ukraine. It is the regime in Russia that blocks the access for over 60 Ukrainian websites in Crimea and 113 in Donbas, and then passes the law in the parliament that enables and prohibits the VPN system and technologies. I could keep on vocaling many other crimes that former strategic partner of Ukraine and the if country I may that guaranteed it's just a few seconds and the country that guaranteed our security is today trying to blame us 
for the attempt to secure ourselves. But I really want to thank all of the distinguished member states for solid position of truth. I know it's really difficult to find where this truth is when we live in the stones, floors of information and facing this um, kingdom of, um, of distorted mirrors when one country is blaming another for trying to save this truth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd give the floor to the delegation of Austria, followed by delegation of Armenia. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Austria fully aligns itself with the statement made on behalf of the European Union. Nonetheless, I wish to add a few remarks from a national perspective. Guaranteeing the right to freedom of expression and ensuring a free and vibrant media landscape takes effort. It needs our action to protect journalists, to connect with information, and to believe that our societies are strong enough to withstand hatred and terror without exceptional or excessive measures. This means, first and foremost, to protect those that tell us the stories we need to hear. We must protect these brave journalists to tell us the stories that we need to know, protect them from intimidation, from violence, harassment, imprisonment, and any other arbitrary restrictions. Second, we need to connect to the information that we need to know. In the 21st century, this means access to the internet. The benefits of the internet are obvious, and in today's information society, an open and accessible internet is essential for us to connect to the information we need to know. Together with the Czech Presidency of the Council of Europe, we aim to discuss these digital rights at our upcoming joint conference on internet freedom on the 13th of October in Vienna, to which I take this opportunity to invite you all here today. Thirdly, and overall, we must believe that our societies are strong enough to withstand hatred and terror without needing exceptional or excessive measures against free speech. If ever free speech, if ever speech is restricted to address legitimate security concerns, the principles of necessity and proportionality are especially important. Exceptions should not become the norm. They should be just that, exceptions. If we look at the state of media freedom today, it seems we need to be reminded of the value of a diverse, pluralistic, inclusive, and vibrant media sphere. In this regard, we commend the invaluable work of the OSCE representative on freedom of the media, Mr. Harlem Desir, including his efforts in drawing our attention to new and emerging challenges, and in giving a voice to those who are silenced. The, the activities of the RFOM correspond largely with a number of priorities in Austria's human rights policy. I have already touched upon three safety of journalists, to protect those that tell us the stories we need to hear, internet freedom, to connect to the information that we need to know, and the balance between free speech and national security, to believe that our societies are strong enough to withstand hatred and terror without needing exceptional or excessive measures against free speech. I would conclude by referring to the Vienna Conclusions on Safety of Journalists and Media Ethics, published in March this year, following a high-level conference um, of the OSCE on freedom of the media in the Western Balkans and invite you all to read further recommendations listed in this document. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Um, why is it echoing? Uh, I would like now to give the floor to the delegation of Armenia, which will be followed by the delegation of Lithuania. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to start by warmly welcoming Mr. Arlem Dezi. OSC representative on freedom of media to HDM and thank him for his first important contribution and guidance in framing our discussions here. We subscribe to the view that freedom of expression is not merely one of fundamental freedoms. It remains the best indicator of overall situation of human rights in any given country or society. The freedom of expression is essential in addressing propaganda of war and hatred and protecting people residing in the conflict areas from massive and grave human rights violations. Any attempt to deny access of journalists and other media workers to conflict areas could be recognized as early warning sign, since all premeditated mass atrocities, including genocide, had been preceded by determined efforts to prevent communication and isolate future victims. The criminalization of the visits of journalists to the conflict areas is illegal practice. The criminal case of Anatoly Lapshin has been a case in point, and such a violent reprisal against freedom of expression should not be repeated. We urge the ROFM 
to pay particular attention to the freedom of expression and mass media in the environment of existing conflicts. Armenia has passed a long way to ensure current level of freedom of expression, also by decriminalizing libel, sustaining free internet, and regulating financial fees. But our journey did not stop here, and we stand ready to work closely with RFOM and his ABLE team in furthering our common achievements. And uh, in conclusion, I have to submit uh, two recommendations. First, we recommend all participating states and all relevant authorities to ensure unimpeded access of journalists and media workers to conflict areas and refrain from criminal, criminalizing activities of journalists therein. Second, we recommend to the RFM office to collect good practices on creating conditions for unimpeded work of journalists and media workers in the conflict area and in conflict environment. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, next on my list is delegation of Lithuania, followed by the Russian Union of Journalists. Uh, thank you. Of course, uh, we align ourselves uh, also with the statement of, of the EU, and the purpose of my intervention is to emphasize uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, safety of journalists. And uh, uh, as today was uh, put uh, by my Spanish colleague, uh, they are, uh, I mean journalists, uh, they are uh, the world's eyes and ears, uh, especially in such uh, uh, areas as conflict zones. Uh, unfortunately, information comes uh, to us at a price, uh, as um, it was mentioned uh, today by uh, uh, Mr. Arlem Desir. Uh, journalists are still being uh, persecuted, detained, or even uh, killed as a result of their professional activities, not only in situations of armed conflict, but also in peacetime. In some countries, uh, working conditions for journalists are in disturbing decline, particularly in the aftermath of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Prevailing impunity for crimes against uh, journalists, uh, political pressure, uh, arbitrary arrests, disinformation wars seem to have become a new normal. We are gravely concerned about the ongoing information wars uh, where in, uh, media is used by states to instigate propaganda for war or deliberately, de deliberately spread information. Uh, the journalists themselves often uh, become victims of these campaigns. The OC should therefore uh, pay more attention to this important issue which has a negative effect on our democracies. We are also concerned about the continuous challenges to freedom of speech in the digital uh, media. It is unacceptable that journalists, especially women, are constantly being harassed on the Internet. As evidenced by UN Security uh, Council Resolution 2222, initiated, initiated by Lithuania, we uh, strongly condemn any repressions, not only against media professionals, but also uh, bloggers and uh, those volun voluntarily involved in the uh, journalist, uh, journalistic activities. Uh, in July, Lithuania, together with uh, the OSCE representative for, uh, on uh, freedom of media, has held an international conference on safety of journalists, where recent developments were uh, reviewed, with particular focus on new challenges uh, uh, relating to the safety of journalists in the OSCE region. We are uh, delighted that the outcome of this conference will be reflected in the new edition of the OSCE Handbook on Safety of Journalists, with aims to assist the OSCE countries in ensuring uh, safe work working conditions uh, for journalists. Safety of journalists is also uh, among our priorities in the executive, uh, executive board of UNESCO, and it's uh, part of uh, our campaign on, uh, for a seat in the uh, United Nations Human Rights Council. We urge all uh, OSCE part participating states not only to respect the freedom of, uh, of expression, but also to better cooperate in creating a coherent framework that would allow for sufficient remedies and uh, prevention of violence against them, notably in light of the new challenges such as widespread dis disinformation campaigns, restrictions uh, for online media, obstacles faced by the investigative journalist, uh, uh, safety of uh, female journalists, 
journalists, etc. I can I could uh, ask you only, to, yeah, uh, I'm, wrap I'm up, uh, finishing. I can only reassure that Lithuania is strongly committed to this cause and stand, uh, stands ready to play its part in promoting the freedom of expression and en enhancing international standards for the safety of journalists. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And now the Russian Union of Journalists, which will be followed by Pax Europa. Thank you. To begin with, uh, as a representative of the Russian Union of Journalists, I'd like to congratulate Harlem Désir on his appointment uh, to this uh, very uh, important uh, and authoritative position. Your activity is very important uh, uh, for our whole area. We've been engaged in dialogue with Ukrainian journalists for a long time, despite the fact that there is a conflict situation. Uh, in the southeast of Ukraine. That dialogue has uh, borne fruit. In this uh, period, the youth uh, section of our journalists uh, has resulted in more than 100 journalists from both sides being involved in various uh, projects. Uh, we've uh, cre shot uh, three documentary films. We're working on a fourth. We've organized an uh, a very important uh, exhibit and I think that this kind of work, this kind of grassroots work is very important and is very needed. It is sorely needed and in just uh, 10 days we will be opening uh, the Pan-Russian Festival of Journalists uh, in the course of which we will be assessing the outcome of this um, dialogue uh, between Russian and Ukrainian journalists. Uh, uh, I mean, we are the largest union of journalists in Europe. Uh, we have 160,000 members. And listening to the statements of our colleagues, uh, I th find it very strange that there is no sense of what the media space in Russia looks like. Uh, Harlem Désir uh, is uh, invited uh, to join us uh, to come to our festival. We will be inviting journalists uh, from other places in Europe. Uh, um, and um, we will be stressing how the media can contribute to, to cultural dialogue. Uh, so we'll be very pleased to receive Harlem Desir so that he could ha get a hands-on experience uh, of what the media in what the media space uh, in Russia looks like. Uh, now we. Uh, we uh, are very much suffering from uh, the fact uh, that we are prevented from any kind of professional work uh, on the territory of Ukraine. And I think that uh, among the very top priorities of Harlem Désir, there should be uh, some sort of initiative uh, that would make it possible for Russian journalists uh, to work on the territory of Ukraine without being expelled. Uh, now, we've uh, colleagues have talked uh, about uh, the Mirad Foritz uh, site uh, or uh, peace uh, creator site. I mean, the problem is uh, that you end up with a blacklist which results not only in intimidation and harassment, but even, but even uh, killing, but even assassination. So another top priority for Harlem Desir should be to bring about the closure of that site. The list will be Pax Europa, followed by the delegation of Kyrgyzstan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The annotated agenda for this session rightly focuses on the need for protection of expression, of free expression and media freedom, which is also high on the agenda of the Austrian OSCE chairmanship. While this focus is commendable, reality is very different. The past year has seen a vast deterioration of the ability for free citizens to express their thoughts and beliefs as evidenced by a steep rise in the number of prosecutions and the conviction of people with dissenting and critical opinions. Sadly, too much of this is taking place west and not, as often suggested, east of Vienna. One case in point involves the recent conviction of the German journalist Michael Stürzenberger. He was sentenced to a suspended jail sentence of six months. His crime? He uploaded on social media a historical photo of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, shaking hands with a high-ranked high national socialist. He was accused of disseminating propaganda and inciting hatred against Islam, when in truth he was depicting the fact that high representatives of Islam collaborated with Nazi Germany. 
Germany in particular should feel a Germany should feel a particular obligation for freedom to document and discuss all horrors of the National Socialist regime. What makes this case especially egregious is the fact that German law specifically permits the use of historical photos when reporting on historical events. Furthermore, it should be obvious that true freedom of expression allows for the opinion calling Islam a quote-unquote fascist ideology. It should most certainly not be called slander. Another case involves the well-known German author of Turkish descent, Akif Perinci, who in October will be in court for hate speech. He gave a speech during a Pegida rally in Dresden. Perinci is famous for his special writing style, which one may like or dislike. However, he must now defend himself against charges of incitement to hatred against Muslim, Muslims living in Germany. His books have since been pulled off the shelves by his publisher, thereby punishing him by demonetizing him. The only measure to deal with so-called hatred is more free speech. Either there is free speech or there isn't free speech at all. I will now get to the recommendations. Pax Europa recommends that participating states and the OEC return to true and unrestricted freedom of expression and reestablish a marketplace of ideas rather than permitting licensed speech. That participating state, states, especially those west of Vienna, cease prosecuting individuals, including members of the media holding dissenting views. And finally, Pax Europa calls on the representative on freedom of the media to ensure that truth can never constitute hate speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'll now give the floor to the delegation of Kyrgyzstan, which will be followed by NGO Media Consulting. Thank you very much indeed. Participants, Kyrgyzstan today is creating the preconditions for freedom of the media. We have uh, legal standards in an in independent institute for regulating the media. Uh, the social media is playing a bigger role in forming opinion and um, a lot of people get their information from this. They also get exposed to different points of view. Uh, in terms of the index of uh, reporters without borders. We were in 89th place and our position has got better. Uh, we've um, gone up by 70 points. We are seeing more uh, involvement of the media. Um, the internet is growing and that doesn't come under the term of mass media. Um, so we are seeing a lot of websites as well contributing to the media landscape. So the um, review of complaints is something that's also seeing a positive development. Uh, we are seeing a development of processes in this area. In 2007, the Council of Europe adopted a resolution on criminalizing disinformation, and we have made um, progress on this. We have um, made uh, such slanderous comments, uh, criminal offenses in certain situations. In the situation of the rule of law, we have to recognize the criminal responsibility of those who do undermine such human rights. So we are pursuing such cases through the judicial system. And uh, these cases are based on objectively available material. I'd like to close by expressing respect for this forum and the hope that we will use this forum to objectively address questions arising within the context of the human dimension rather than pursuing uh, individual interests. And uh, I will be submitting this statement for the minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now the floor will go to the NGO Media Consulting. Uh, after that will be in uh, International Secretariat of the Reporters Without Borders. 
Здравствуйте, я... Good afternoon. I'm a, a director of the NGO called Media Consulting, and in my statement I would like to refer to the issue of the economic crisis. The development of uh, uh, Tajik media over the last few years has never been uh, even. There have been boom times. Uh, uh, there have been uh, lean times, uh, but over the last few years we've been subject to a very serious economic crisis uh, and a decline in activity because of that, and that's having a catastrophic effect. Uh, our organization organized uh, in uh, uh, a survey last year of uh, media in my country, and 90-odd percent of them said that they were subject to a serious economic crisis. Uh, in the past, it wasn't television and radio that were the flagships uh, of the media in uh, Tajikistan, but rather the written press. Uh, but now they are suffering heavy losses. Uh, it started out well. They managed uh, to achieve a lot, to grow, uh, to flourish. We had uh, national media that were successful, but uh, the decline is uh, visible. Uh, the, the income from print runs has uh, declined by 15, 20 percent, which means that uh, print runs are declining, revenue is declining, and some written press uh, uh, publications have simply closed down as a result of that. At the present time, the revenue from prints, from sales, uh, is uh, only some 25 percent, but uh, a significant uh, role has been played by the inflation and uh, the uh, input uh, production uh, factors became very expensive. Uh, my country produces almost nothing. It has to be imported, paid for in uh, hard currency. And so inflation had a big impact on the economic situation of the media. Uh, over the last uh, three years, uh, the uh, national currency has lost half its value. And the, uh, there's an even a greater percentage of loss of income as a result uh, for the media, some 45 to 50 percent. Uh, a number of uh, the media have had to reduce their staff, and staff reductions, of course, have resulted in a deterioration of the content. And. Uh, a last issue, is the economic uh, crisis uh, a threat uh, for the media? Well, uh, some one-third of the media that responded to our questionnaire said that yes, uh, and 80% uh, of them said uh, that uh, the present situation is having a negative impact on the editorial independence uh, of our media. And I'm mentioning all of this in connection with uh, freedom of the media, and I would appeal to international organizations to help our media to preserve their independence despite the crisis. International Secretariat, uh, which will be followed by Election Monitoring and Democracy Studies Center. And if I could ask some of the other speakers on the other side who've already taken the floor and uh, to release the seats for others who are still waiting. Th th thank you very much. My name is Johan Beer. I'm working for Reporters Without Borders, the, interna the international NGO defending press freedom. Um, I've, been, I've held this position for six years and what I've seen is a slaughter of press freedom across the area. So I really want to ring the alarm bell here. Um, I won't be very long uh, describing facts, since many of them have already been described. Um, but just to emphasize that, indeed, this meeting is very timely and very important, uh, since press freedom is in very serious retreat. Um, <clears throat> of course, as we speak, uh, we uh, think very much of our colleagues in Turkey, uh, colleagues of Jumuriyet newspapers uh, who now are waiting for the judges to decide whether or not their uh, detention will be extended or not. Uh, I just want to uh, emphasize that 
despite this trial, uh, mass trial of journalists are taking place in Turkey very often, very regularly. Uh, on the 18th of September, 30 journalists will be tried, um, uh, including Ali Bulac and uh, Shahin Alpay. They are, they, will wait, they are waiting for their trial for a year. They've been jailed since July last year, and they will only have the right to defend themselves. Another trial, the trial of the Altan brothers uh, and Nazlo Ilujak and others, will uh, resume the following day, on the 19th of September. <clears throat> uh, let me uh, just say a few words about Azerbaijan, since it, we indeed um, heard the great news that uh, Mehman Aliyev, the director of Turan Agency, has been released this morning. This is indeed great news, but um, Turan Agency, which was the very last independent media outlet in the country, has been closed um, in, in, in effect. So. Um, the situation remains very dire. A minimum of 15 other journalists, bloggers and media assistants remain behind bar in Azerbaijan. So we really urge the authorities to uh, free them, to release them immediately and to allow um, media outlets, independent media outlets uh, and um, dissenting views to express themselves freely. Uh, I, as I said, I won't um, expand uh, longer on, on the cases. Uh, Azerbaijan ranks 162nd out of, our, out of 180 countries in our latest press freedom index. Uh, Turkey ranks 155th. Among others, Turkmenistan still uh, holds the 168th position. Um, Tajikistan ranks 149th, Belarus ranks 153, etc., etc. So just uh, to sum up again, this is a call for action. Um, we, <clears throat> well, many dire situations have been um, discussed here, and this is this is the time the time to act. So I really urge uh, the OSC member states to act both internally. Um, uh, by upholding the, their own commitments and um, also externally by promoting them, uh, promoting these commitments uh, by speaking clear and uh, when necessary um, by instating sanctions uh, such uh, as the Magnitsky laws uh, whenever this is necessary. If Thank I you can ask much. you to con conclude as you did. Thank you. Uh, so, next is the Election Monitoring and Democracy Studies Centers, followed by the delegation of Kazakhstan. Uh, <clears throat> welcome. Uh, my name is Samet Rahimli. Uh, uh, I'm an independent lawyer. Uh, for the pu purposes of this uh, meeting, I, I am representing uh, AMDC at hoc basis. Uh, in the case of freedom of expression in Azerbaijan, uh, it's a one of the worst countries. Uh, but in my, uh, in my uh, remarks, I try to summarize trends. First, internet media. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, has a new blocking law, uh, which allows authorities, especially uh, uh, Ministry of Communication, to uh, block websites in vague manner. And uh, the courts and Minister of Communication applied this law to all the major opposition line uh, med media organization. And now in the territory of Azerbaijan, all of the major uh, oppositionary and critical media blocked in the internet. Secondly, uh, the Azerbaijan authorities continues hacking and denial attacks to the internet websites, which is the informal character, but the civil society has a technical proof, the, uh, technical evidence that uh, proving that this attack comes from the uh, governmental organization. Third problem in the uh, internet media is a social media arrest. Many, uh, so many persons uh, arrested uh, in uh, s uh, minor, uh, false minor charge uh, uh, for the posting, uh, postings in the social media. Second problem area is broadcasting media. First of all, uh, in uh, uh, Human Rights Committee of uh, United Nations found in uh, one of the recent uh, decisions that Azerbaijan violating uh, freedom of expression with its broadcasting law, not allowing licensing independent media. Secondly, Azerbaijan attacks, uh, continuous attacks to satellite media, which one of the uh, one of uh, one of them is Azerbaijan Times, it's a uh, Strasbourg-based media. 
Third is a problem in print media. Azerbaijan Prosecutor Gen General Office continues to use systematic manner uh, criminal uh, legislation against the uh, journalists and attacks from uh, pro-governmental lines continues to uh, continues to uh, ag against uh, journalists uh, our uh, summary document will be presented uh, in documentation office uh, but in general I would like mention that the violation of uh, freedom of expression in Azerbaijan is not occasional it's not individual it's in systematic manner it's a regular and it's a repetitive and institutional Thank you um, very much. Now the floor goes to the delegation of Kazakhstan, followed by the delegation of Romania. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. I'd um, like briefly to pick up on previous statements on Kazakhstan. Uh, firstly, with regard to the uh, blocking of material on internet sites. That happens in specific cases provided for by law. By way of example, I can say that um, material is blocked uh, for uh, terrorism and religious extremism, um, pornography, incitation to violence, uh, narcotics-related trafficking. I think that's clear. With regard to the amendments of the law relating to media, now those are currently before the Parliament of the Republic of Kazakhstan. The relevant Ministry on Information and Communication has carried out consultations on these amendments, firstly in a working group with uh, around 60 individuals, including representatives of the media. And I'd particularly like to emphasize here that there were representatives of NGOs and civil society there, uh, including representatives of um, NGOs here today. As public consultations were carried out with representatives of all regions of the country and the draft law was published on the internet where it was possible uh, to make comments. Over 200 uh, proposals were received, more than 70% uh, of which were reflected in the document. With regard to certain issues, allow me to make a few brief comments with regard to the permission for publication of some information. What we're dealing with here is the publication of banking secrets, uh, commercial secrets, personal secrets, etc. These are um, part of uh, public life and um, entitled to privacy. With regard to uh, the limits on information, the legislation's amendments have been made in light of international experience. Other countries as well have um, established uh, longer terms for the issues relating to media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's the turn of the delegation of um, Romania and then followed by uh, Public Union Civil Movement April. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Romania is fully in line with the statement that has been made on behalf of the European Union. But with your per um, permission, Chairman, I'd like to add a few comments on a national basis. Romania warmly welcomes the appointment of Mr. Harlem Desir as the uh, representative for freedom of the media, and we congratulate him on the very good start uh, to his term uh, and uh, the expression of his uh, priorities. Freedom of media and uh, take note uh, of this opportunity to reiterate uh, Romania's full support for the independence uh, of uh, this autonomous institution and for uh, its mandate. As we have constantly said, strong societies need strong and independent media. For us, 
freedom of expression and its corollary, freedom of the media, online and offline, are of paramount importance for the consolidation of democracy and uh, prosperity of societies. The main role of a free media is to defend the public interest, and with that in mind, uh, we, OEC participating states, should fully implement the rich acquis we have committed to in this field at the OEC level. We thank and appreciate the Austrian Chairmanship for keeping freedom of expression and media freedom high on the agenda of our organization during this challenging and complex period. The emergence of new sources of information, but also persistent threats to the freedom of expression and freedom of the media, need our adequate response. Romania is fully committed to implementing uh, its commitments, and we should also be ready to adopt new commitments to respond to these emerging challenges. We hope that participating states will indeed agree on a document on this matter um, in the upcoming Ministerial Council in Vienna, and with that to have our commitments, uh, commitments strengthened. We should also intens intensify our efforts to fight propaganda emphasizing credible, authentic voices that provide alternative narratives to challenge fake news and distort truth. In this regard, we would like to see the, one dark, the, the work done by the previous RFOM taken further, and we reassure the new representative on freedom of the media and its team of our unwavering support. I thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Ambassador. Now uh, I give the floor to the Public Union Civil Movement April, which will be followed by the Institute of Mass Information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'm the uh, director of the Civil Movement uh, April, which uh, has been uh, very much uh, involved in the three colored revolutions. And I can assure you that this uh, has been very positive uh, for my uh, country. I'll just mention three main changes that you can certainly come and observe and verify. The first is that for the first time in the history of Kyrgyzstan, President Atambayev meets every year with the media. He holds unprepared press conferences during which very open, unprepared questions are put to him, some of them very hard-hitting questions. Uh, and then we also have uh, um, separate electronic uh, voting and voting by hand. So uh, everyone can uh, verify the two systems. Uh, this is something that has been tested in the presidential uh, elections this year. We will be practicing this hybrid voting. Third, uh, for the first time, the President of the Republic, Atambayev, uh, uh, is uh, uh, leaving his uh, position uh, at the end of his term of office. Uh, he could easily have taken advantage of various uh, political instruments uh, to extend his power, to remain in power, and yet he is voluntarily leaving. And so today, the principles of the OSCE have uh, taken life uh, and we are living in accordance with them, uh, in particular a peaceful transfer of power between administrations. Uh, now, I participated in an OSC meeting for the first time 10 years ago. Now I'm once again at an OSCE meeting and, and I can tell you that the OSCE symphony has not changed. There were just as many problems 10 years ago as today. Perhaps they're, they're more difficult today. Now, should the methodology of the OSCE be changed? Should the intellectual approach to problems of the OSCE be changed? Should the uh, techniques uh, be different? Uh, I mean, you know, quantum physics is not the same as Newtonian physics. Uh, and maybe there is a problem 
with uh, um, an excessive burden of work for a very large institution like the OSCE. Thank you. Uh, now I'll give the floor to the Institute of Mass Information, followed by the Belarusian Association of Journalists. Oksana. Hello, everybody. Hello, uh, dear guests. And uh, my name is Oksana Romanyuk. I am executive director of the Institute of Mass Information. Uh, this is a Ukrainian NGO which does monitoring of freedom of speech in Ukraine. And first of all, I would like to congratulate the new representative for freedom of speech and say that Ukrainian NGOs hope for fruitful collaboration. And for us, it is very important that the first statement uh, of you was devoted to the murder of journalist Pavlo Sheremet, which for us is a very um, crucial issue. Um, what are the main challenges in Ukraine right now and what we are doing and where we need uh, your help or international support? First of all, it is, of course, the issue of impunity because uh, we still have um, very little progress in investigation of attacks on journalists during Maidan revolution where over 200 journalists suffered and only some four cases were put in court. Uh, secondly, this is of course the issue of Pavlo Sheremet. Uh, this is where we would need um, attention and international pressure. Uh, what we are doing to combat impunity in Ukraine, we have developed amendments to the criminal code of Ukraine and uh, this is, we hope to see it in parliament in some months and right now we would need uh, international expertise, uh, maybe with support of uh, the office of the new representative so that these amendments um, comply with international legislation. Secondly, we have uh, working groups with police and with uh, prosecutor general office where we um, work over separate attacks on journalists and thanks to this work we have increased uh, in investigations of attacks by some two times compared with the previous year but of course this is not enough and we still need a lot of work to do uh, speaking about safety of journalists in ukraine uh, i would divide it into two parts first this is government controlled territory of ukraine we have had a politically stable year so the physical aggression against journalists has declined almost uh, twice pr compared to the previous year but um, we have non-government controlled territories of ukraine where just last month one facebook blogger was sentenced to 14 years in prison by uh, self-proclaimed authorities of LNR Denner. His name is Eduard Nidilaev, and I haven't heard that this name was mentioned uh, here. Uh, Ukrainian journalists cannot work freely in these areas in Donetsk and Lugansk regions because of very extreme safety challenges. And I think this, is, this issue should be raised uh, at the OEC level. And we were also very happy to hear well, that public yes yes that up. one of the uh, focuses will be public service broadcasting because this is one of the crucial reforms in ukraine and um, it was put into practice since january 1st of this year and final thesis is that uh, the issue of hate speech and fake news has been very very present in ukraine and i suggest that uh, an international conference and multi-stakeholder discussion is necessary on this issue because in Ukraine we are facing this campaign of disinformation and we need to balance between national security on the one hand and on freedom of speech and you know this is very important and I would like to invite everybody to uh, the side event on freedom of speech in, of Ukraine which will be carried out tomorrow at 6 uh, p.m. here in this room, and we will be happy to see you and answer your questions. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to the Belarusian Association of Journalists, uh, which will be um, followed by Youth Movement um, Morgan Institute for Reporters, Freedom and Safety. Uh, 
Good afternoon, colleagues. Our organization has been working for more than 20 years on uh, protecting and promoting freedom of expression in uh, Belarus and uh, protecting freedoms in our country. I'd like particularly to focus on the most problematic issues relating uh, to practicing this freedom in Belarus. We are normally near to the bottom of the index of non-governmental organizations reporting or reflecting um, freedom of expression in countries. And in, amongst the OSCE countries, we are often at the bottom. Uh, journalist freedoms are often not respected and are seen as a form of um, protest against the state. Today, or rather this year again, we've seen mass persecution of journalists where uh, protests against the fines and levies applied to journalists were protested against. Uh, we've seen 123 cases since March related to uh, journalists simply carrying out their professional duties, 94 detentions. Uh, as well as uh, uh, incidents with the police. Uh, we have a number of other incidents as well. Uh, we have serious problems such as uh, giving journalists liability for cooperation with foreign media. Uh, large fines are handed down to citizens of Belarus simply because their materials are located on media registered beyond the borders of Belarus. A number of um, material on the channel Belsat, uh, which uh, broadcasts beyond uh, the borders of Belarus, has also met with uh, fines for the journalists responsible. Uh, these are significant fines uh, equivalent to the average monthly earnings. Uh, of a reporter in Belarus. Another area of concern uh, is the prosecution of um, inciting na international uh, discord. A number of journalists are behind bars for um, violations of this particular provision. So I'd like to encourage all participating states who attach value to freedom of expression to urge the government of Belarus to respect the obligations it's taken upon itself at the international level, particularly within the framework of the OSC. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Now the floor goes to the Youth Movement Mogam Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety, followed by the Open Dialogue Foundation. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Emin Hussein. If I'm not already a member of this youth movement, it's like a technical mistake, but just I'm representative of uh, a journalist organization from Azerbaijan Institute for Reporters and Freedom and Safety. Uh, I would like to ask you to use your headphones because I want to make like brief speech on the Russian, if it's possible. Уважаемые distinguished participants, in this conference. We too would like to congratulate Harlem Desir on his appointment. He's uh, starting on a very difficult voyage uh, and we wish him every success in the course of his term of office. We very much hope that we will receive serious support from him. Journalists in Azerbaijan certainly need that. Uh, and I would like uh, to echo what has been said by my colleague Samedov about uh, uh, problems with the media, but also with the media on the internet. Uh, in my country, all of the independent media have been destroyed. The last newspaper uh, that was truly independent was closed down a year ago. And as for internet sites, uh, if they're independent, they've been closed down as well. But let me talk about the root cause of this. Why are we in this situation? And then maybe a few comments about Mehman Aliyev, the uh, director of uh, the last independent press agency, was not released. Uh, he was uh, simply moved from prison arrest to house arrest. He does not have the right to talk to the media. He is kept at home in isolation. 
and he could still be imprisoned for a further eight years for a falsified on a falsified charge of non-payment of taxes. And this is a typical way of intimidating and harassing uh, anyone who criticizes uh, the authorities uh, uh, for the terrible uh, multi-billion corruption. Uh, I mean, uh, this uh, really is uh, the first country in the world uh, where the president uh, uh, passed on uh, powers uh, to his spouse. Mehriban Aliyeva became the number two of the state. Uh, uh, and when certain people started uh, to publish uh, the accounts of uh, certain senior civil servants uh, close to the Mekriban family, then those individuals were simply uh, put uh, in prison. Uh, in uh, March of 2012, my brother, who published such information, uh, was put in prison. Now, why did they uh, release uh, uh, this uh, director of the independent press agency from uh, prison arrest to house arrest uh, because a well-known American senator has put pressure and has called for uh, sanctions against uh, these individuals. But we have a list of 16 journalists uh, who need to be protected. And uh, last week, uh, the results of an investigation were published uh, and give, uh, pointing a finger at uh, 16 a thousand uh, transactions uh, with three billion dollars uh, uh, moving through Estonian banks into Danish accounts. Uh, countries like Italy, Germany, Slovenia uh, were involved, uh, uh, and the husband of the director general of UNESCO was receiving money from Azerbaijan. And a lot of these payments were made in order to close people's mind, mouths about problems with freedom of expression and freedom of the media in Azerbaijan. And the individual countries of the EU and the United States should really unite to combat this scandalous situation. Thank you. Open Dialogue Foundation followed by Set My People Free. Thank you very much, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. As uh, Open Dialogue Foundation, as human rights organization, monitors the situation in the post-Soviet region, I would like to draw your attention to the serious problem with media freedom in Moldova and Kazakhstan. In Moldova, the media belongs to businessmen and politicians who use them for the purpose of propaganda in struggle against opposition activists and human rights defenders, such as Anna Ursaki and Eduardo Rodenko. As noticed in the report of Center of uh, Independent Journalists, approximately 70% of countries' TV market belongs to oligarch Vladimir Plachatnyuk. He owns four of the five existing national telev uh, television channels. Due to this fact, Moldovans don't receive objective and independent information about the event in the country. That is why we call OC states to put pressure on Moldova in order to stop the tendency of monopolization uh, of the media market. At Odo, as Open Dialogue Foundation, we also noticed the incidents of surveillance of Moldovan journalists carried out in order to intimidate them. In particular, Vladimir uh, Solovyov, an editor-in-chief of a newsmaker outlet. Uh, this year was followed after publishing critical uh, new, uh, publications. Even worse situation uh, with freedom of the media in Kazakhstan, where regime of Nazarbayev practically eliminates during uh, last year's almost all dependent media outlets as Respublika and recently the Tribuna newspaper, or even put into arrest bloggers critical to regime of Nazarbayev as Talgat Alyan, Max Bakayev, or Sanat Dosov. The Open Dialogue Foundation observes a regular practice of fabrication of criminal cases with a financial or terrorism social discord accusation against journalists and bloggers, especially after their publication in social media. It became normal practice, uh, 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 like in case of Jean Balat Mamai, forbid uh, for journalists and bloggers to work freely by court decision. A journalist Jean Balat Mamai uh, was accused on charges of uh, laundering money uh, from the exiled opposition leader and former head of BTA Bank, Muhtar Ablazov, through the Tribuna newspaper. More than 30 human rights organizations from different countries recognize this case as politically motivated. Mamai was recently conditionally uh, 
released thanks to international pressure. The Open Dialogue Foundation uh, considered it necessary for OC states to take the following steps uh, as uh, to demand from Moldovan and Kazakh authorities full compliance with their obligation to respect freedom of the speech, human rights, and cease political persecution. All journalists and bloggers has to be released unconditionally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Set My People Free, followed by Young Citizen Enlightenment Public Union. Thank you. Uh, I think every year we come and discuss uh, freedom of expression. I think it is a continuous struggle to keep freedom of expression. It is very much like a fish going upstream. And only the dead fish go downstream. And I think we all agree freedom of expression is very important. Without freedom of expression, there is no freedom Without freedom of speech, there is no equality. Without freedom of media, there is no freedom of speech. Freedom of expression is fundamental for democracy, fundamental for accountability, fundamental for critical thinking. My concern is today many people are speaking about censorship of social media. Social media took the monopoly from the mainstream media and revived free objective journalism. Social media took away the monopoly and the control of the media from the powerful and the rich and the mainstream media and made them more accountable. It made information more accessible to all. the individual the platform and the power to impl implement his right of freedom of speech. The internet made it possible for his voice to be heard internationally. Today, the powerful want to control the internet and social media to limit again the freedom of speech through laws and political power as the internet challenges their dominions. The result is that you will have one dominant narrative which is, which is not allowed to be questioned and which is not based on truth, facts, or common sense. The other concern I have is the blasphemy law is Islam which shock freedom worldwide. You even don't have the right to say that you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad. Or if you question the, the Sharia law, like cutting of hands, you are accused of blasphemy, and you may face deaths like C.U. John Do, uh, Van jo Gogh and Charlie Hebdo, or you face honor killing. An example of application of blasphemy, blasphemy law in Islam, another example, the governor of Indonesia who is in jail serving I, prison sentence. If I can ask you supported, to come to a conclusion because time is and already And the third thing, this is supported. by terrorism, which I call hate crimes, to blackmail, to shock freedom of speech and silence people. And another word which is used very much is Islamophobia or political correctness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next is Young C Citizen Enlightenment Public Union, followed by Citizens Labor Rights Protection League. Thank you. My name is Gunel Safa from Azerbaijan. Um, I would like to thank the organizers of such important event and the colleagues took the floor before me condemned persecutions against independent media. I am agree with most of them, but except uh, the, and the fake information about Azerbaijan regarding the data and freedom of speech. But I would like to draw your attention to a particular issue. I want to inform you that more than 120 journalists from OAC member countries have so far entered the capital of Nagorno-Karabakh in breach of international law and the law of Azerbaijan state. Just I would like to ask to journalists applied for performing any activities in the territory of Azerbaijan. Sometimes it seems to me that OSCI is only to east from the Vienna and 
not to the West part. But Islamophobia, discrimination, and activities against minorities' rights happening in the West too. Also, if we talk about the security of journalists, I want to mention that five journalists, as a journalist, were killed by Armenian military service. Don't search the names because you will not find those names in any international reports. But I will say, Salatan Askerva, Osman Mizeev, Fakhreddin Shahbazov, Kazim Aga Karimov, Chinggis Safaev. Also, it's very early to talk about the security of journalists. Even we can talk about the security of civils. I want to mention that just two months ago, two years old, Zehra and her grandmother were killed in their house by the Armenian military service. So I urge international organizations and also OSCE as well to force Armenian to follow principles of international law. And if we choose to eliminate the problems and reach an outcome, we should put aside double and triple standards and take constructive position. Thank you very much. Thank you um, very much. Uh, next is the Citizens Labour Rights Protection League, followed by the delegation of Switzerland. Representative of a uh, number of uh, countries, journalists and bloggers, and what is often forgotten is national security of uh, state representatives. A uh, number of um, terrorist activities are carried out under the pretext of blogging or being part of another part of the media and hoping to get the protection of NGOs or states. A number of uh, representatives of uh, certain entities are trying to promote uh, such views through the media. And in the United European Union and the United States, we see the process of uh, laundering of money through the Eastern Partnership countries. And because of this, uh, certain representatives of the media become victims. Uh, the, there are particular NGOs which carry out this kind of criminal activity, and some have even been present in this room. Uh, we've heard lies about uh, the information agency, information agency being closed, um, websites being closed. But to date, um, we are seeing the activities of such sites continue. So there are definitely uh, victims. Um, we've heard the list of names of parliamentarians. Um, but I don't know what's going on here and uh, who is paying whom for what. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, next is the delegation of Switzerland, followed by the Central Asian and Southern Caucasus Freedom of um, Ex-Prisoners Network. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Recent developments in the OSCE region with regards to silencing of critical voices and crackdown on independent media have led to a worrying decrease in freedom of expression and free speech. Switzerland strongly condemns the continuing assaults on journalists, media workers, and others who exercise their right to freedom of expression. The repression of journalists violates not only the rights of journalists, but the rights of everyone to have free access to information. Mr. Moderator, Switzerland also actively supports the discussion on safety of journalists in the United Nations. We have co-sponsored the Human Rights Council Resolution on Safety of Journalists in September last year, as well as the UNESCO Resolution to support the UN Plan of Action on the Safety of Journalists and the Question of Impunity in April this year. 
Now that the normative work has been done by the UN and by regional organizations such as the OSC and the Council of Europe, Switzerland calls on all OSC participating states to focus on the question of how to implement those standards at the country level, as well as to enhance the sharing of good practices between the different international organizations. Furthermore, disinformation and propaganda in the media poses numerous threats to democratic societies aiming at manipulating individuals and distorting public opinion. However, blocking or banning media outlets is not an answer to the phenomenon of fake news. Statements by government questioning the work of journalists and degrading the essential role of the media plays, the, the media plays in every democratic society only undermine the credibility of the media and could make journalists more vulnerable to being targeted with violence and abuse. Instead, OSCE participating states can refer to the various instruments and recommendations produced by the OSCE in this context, such as the Vienna Conclusions on Safety of Journalism and Media Ethics from March this year. This document offers a recommendation on how to improve the safety of journalists while strengthening self-regulation and professional ethics of journalists to deepen media literacy of citizens and to counter hate speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Just a quick reminder to any delegations that would like to exercise their right to reply to come and sign up for uh, that. Next, uh, as I said, Central Asian and Southern Caucasus Freedom of Expression Network, so my apologies, which will be uh, followed by the Western Trace Minority um, Association. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will try to be very quick and uh, will not uh, stop by any uh, details of uh, certain cases. So uh, I will try to, uh, to answer some uh, claims here which were raised. Uh, first of all, I am representing Azerbaijan and uh, my name is Azar Asret and uh, my organization is dealing with freedom of expression uh, issues uh, already for 15 years. So, and we are dealing with Central Asia as well. So, uh, some, uh, we are talking uh, here about fake news uh, distribution, and uh, unfortunately, some speakers here are delivering fake information about the situation in Azerbaijan and in regard to Turan News Agency and Mehman Aliyev's case. Uh, let me uh, answer these claims. Uh, Mehman Aliyev is free today and he is not against uh, investigation his case in Azerbaijan. And But uh, uh, I don't know uh, for which reason some people are concerned about his case. He is free. No. And uh, uh, in regard to case of uh, blogger uh, Alexander Lapshin, who, who was uh, he uh, who was in Azerbaijan and today was pardoned by President uh, Ilham Aliyev and he is free to leave Azerbaijan to go back to Israel uh, to his country. Uh, he has several times uh, crossed the border of Azerbaijan. That's why he was incarcerated. No any country on the uh, would uh, allow any people to illegally cross his uh, its borders. So that's why he was incarcerated, not for writing in his blogs. Armenian delegate is accusing Azerbaijan or just uh, the countries which uh, um, incarcerates uh, bloggers for crossing uh, the, uh, the borders. But uh, uh, would Armenia allow people to cross Armenian uh, borders illegally? Of course not. So that's why I, I, I would like to draw attention of all uh, participants to the case of delivering fake news here using this platform. This platform is not uh, just for propaganda. This platform is uh, for sharing uh, fair information with others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so next is Western Trace Minority Association, followed by a delegation of France. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Pervin Hayrullah, and I'm representing the Turkish minority of Western Trace here. As the representatives of the Turkish minority of Western Trace in Greece, we would like to inform you about the recent conditions in Western Trace and challenges faced by the Turkish minority. And also, we would like to recommend 
to the international organizations as well as to the OSCE to raise the issue of Western trace Turkish minority in terms of fundamental freedoms in, in the bilateral meetings with Greek authorities to monitor effectively the situation of the Turkish minority regarding the discrimination and intolerance. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it's expression. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. it's about. And also violation of the basic human rights to pay a visit to Western Trace in order to get first-hand information and to obs observe ob objectively through the High Commissioner on National Minorities, the representative on freedom of media and the personal representative of the OAC chair in office on combating intolerance and discriminations against Muslims. The Turkish minority of Western Thrace cannot enjoy the basic human rights that are envisaged by the Greek constitution and the universal and in European standards. The freedom of expression is one of those rights that the Greek authorities try to coerce the Turkish minority. To give an example, the authorities have increased the pressure on our elected muftis, the religious leaders, by using legal procedures as a systematic tool of intimidation. We have lost track of the number of times that they have been summoned by the prosecutor's office, police or courts to be questioned for accusations that have no legal ground at all. Currently, there is a court case waiting to be heard about the elected Mufti of Xanthi on the grounds that he led his funeral, funeral pray, prayer of a minority member. The elected Mufti of Komotini, on the other hand, was integrated on the grounds that he attended a circumcision ceremony and delivering messages. We, as the representatives of the Turkish minority, face with degrading and racist identifications, as well as have been targeted by ultra-nationalist media organizations just because we identify ourselves as Turks or the members of the Turkish minority. The Greek authorities, however, do not take any precautions regarding this issue. Mr. Moderator, we as the representatives of the Turkish minority of Western Thrace call upon the Greek state to respect the provisions of the international human and minority rights standards, to respect the right to freedom of expression to the, of the Turkish minority, and to take special measures to protect the Turkish minority's right to free speech. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, very much. Next is the delegation of France, followed by the Council of Europe. Merci, Monsieur le Thank you very much indeed, and I'd like to uh, align ourselves with the statement of the European Union and add a few points in a national capacity. France welcomes the appointment by the participating states of Harlem Tazir to the post of representative for the freedom of media, which has given a voice to this institution, a voice which is well known for sounding the alarm uh, in the field of journalism and beyond and within these or the area of the OSC. More than ever today, the independence, objectivity, and impartiality of the media is necessary. It's a fundamental pillar of the OSC, which participating states have all given their commitment to preserving these is a key part of our responsibility. We see today how much these principles are under threat. We are seeing violations of the safety of journalists. Uh, they are key issues. Uh, every day are subject to threats to physical danger. And this is not limited to armed conflicts or terrorist acts. The majority of violent acts against journalists take place in countries at peace. Countries who overly restrict the freedom of expression, who interfere with the editorial freedom of the media when journalists carry out investigation into corruption or express dissident political views. Different standards such as that of religious defamation or the uh, fight against terrorism are used as a pretext to justify the closure of media. Free, independent, and impartial press is a key foundation of democratic societies and that the IOC participating states have recognized that it is part of our select collective security. The developing uh, landscape of the media, uh, which has been changed by the internet, provides new challenges and new tools. With the new forms of journalism, 
We've increased violations of human rights, such as those of bloggers, uh, media workers, of women. We we'll also see an intensification of the use of propaganda, sometimes on behalf of states, or the phenomena of fake news. And we support the work of the RFOM on these issues, which clearly affect our access to information and our safety. We would, by way of recommendation, urge states to make the most of the support function of the representative for the freedom of media so that they can seek assistance in implementing their commitments. Thank you. Ambassador, now the Council of Europe, which will be followed by a delegation of Canada. Mr. Moderator, Council of Europe activities in the information society field aim at promoting the right to respect for private life, the freedom of expression and information, as well as the free flow of information at the pan-European level through the existence of plurality of independent media. Whilst the European Court of Human Rights provides judicial protection to the right to private life and data protection and freedom of expression and information, the Council of Europe policy-making work strives to map out measures that will facilitate the effective exercise of these rights and freedoms having regard to new services, technologies and trends. The Secretary General of the Council of Europe, in his fourth report on the state of democracy, human rights and the rule of law in Europe, released in April this year, pointed to a further deterioration in overall conditions for the freedom of expression in Europe. Media in most member states are experiencing a decline in editorial independence, which hinders their watchdog role and limits plurality as regulatory safeguards are often not strong enough to resist interference from political and economic players. Protection for journalists in particular is further weakening throughout Europe and there is increasing evidence of self-censorship often exacerbated by job insecurity as the media industry overall has come under significant financial pressure. Mr. Moderator, the Czech Chairmanship of the Council of Europe, the Austrian Chairmanship of the OEC, and the Council of Europe will jointly organize important key Internet freedom-related event entitled A Test Case for Internet Freedom on October 13 in Vienna. Given that the needs of society in the digital age are shifting and the role of Internet intermediaries is expanding, key stakeholders will be brought together to examine the scope of their duties and responsibilities in promoting the enjoyment of human rights and fundamental freedoms online. Fin finally, the Council of Europe is looking forward to working with Mr. Desu and his team, and we wish him all the best in his work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is the delegation of Canada, followed by a Russian journalist. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, moderator. Canada warmly welcomes and is delighted uh, with the appointment of the new representative for the freedom of the media, Mr. Harlem Desir, and we thank him for his uh, commitment to freedom of the media. Mr. Representative, we are confident that you and your small but very high quality team will be in a position to continue the sustained efforts of your predecessor, Madame Dunya Miatovic, uh, with a view to underscore the challenges to which participating states must respond and to propose solutions that will result in greater respect for freedom of expression and freedom of opinion, as well as for the essential role played by free and independent media in our democratic societies. I think it is now clear for all that the new technologies that are revolutionizing the world of the media and, the com and of communication simultaneously offer extraordinary emancipation opportunities, but also a real risk of repression and manipulation. Canada is strongly preoccupied by the concern, by the practices of certain OSCE participating states that do not hesitate to, to censure, intimidate, persecute, and imprison uh, human rights activists, uh, journalists, and other bloggers exercising their rights, uh, whether they act online or offline. In other situations, uh, the official authorities uh, fail in their mission to prevent and ensure an effective response when journalists uh, are harassed, attacked, wounded, or even killed. Contrary to what certain states uh, pretend, it is not a question here of offering 
rights to journalists and other media workers, but rather of ensuring that they can exercise, like any other individual, their rights to freedom of expression and opinion as stipulated in many different international and regional agreements. While noting the specificity of each national context, we note in particular that there are challenges to freedom of the media in Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Belarus, Russia, Turkey, Kyrgyzstan, Macedonia, Armenia, and all other countries of the OSCE recently uh, identified by Freedom House as not enjoying freedom of the media. We note in, in also that the situation in occupied Crimea is deplorable and one of the worst in the world. Now, given the serious uh, threats still weighing on freedom of expression and freedom of the media in the OSCE region, Canada can uh, cannot help but reiterate the four recommendations already made at previous meetings. First, that OSCE participating states fully respect their commitments to the OSCE and their international obligations concerning the rights to freedom of association, peaceful assembly, and freedom of expression, both online and elsewhere. Second, that participating states ensure that restrictions on freedom of expression are prescribed by law, transparent, and that their justification can be demonstrated within the framework of a free and democratic society. Third, yes, but just two more points, Mr. Chair. Third, that the representative for the freedom of the media continue his efforts of seeking to stimulate uh, a thinking and action by participating states on the best way of promoting freedom of and freedom of the media through the internet. Fourth and finally, that the representative for the freedom of the media continue uh, to draw the attention of participating states to the problem of enforcement while putting stress uh, on uh, flagrant violations of freedom of expression, freedom of the media, and safety of journalists. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Union of Russian Journalists, followed by Association of Central Asian Migrants. Andrei Trofimov, Andrei Trofimov uh, uh, I'm uh, president of the Association of Journalists in Republic of Vitrin. Dear participants, uh, uh, I'm participating in the work of this conference for the second time, and I'm pleased uh, to be able to inform the international community about the uh, position. Uh, ah, there's a point of order. Excuse me. Yes, it's an NGO, but uh, the name of the organization was said, the, Russian U uh, the Union of Russian Journalists. Yes. There is no entity in the Russia named Republic of Crimea. So uh, using the NGOs for promoting the political experience, uh, for promote, promoting political points of view is inappropriate. And the delegation of Ukraine asks uh, this delegate to be uh, ruled out of order and uh, stop to speak. Thank you for your intervention. Uh, the role is. I think he's right. Huh? Andre thinks he's right. Yes. Mm. So we cannot. Yes. I think you need to either refer in the capacity that you're registered or um, give your place to somebody else. Mr. Moderator. Uh, the Association of Journalists of C Crimea uh, is a, uh, a subsidiary of uh, the Russian Association of Journalists, and I'm pleased to uh, speak in its name. Well, thank you for that. I will continue. I have another point of order. The Union of Russian Journalists has already their speech, and with some recommendations to the moderator. So, according to the rules of procedure, Every, every organization and every state has only one okay. opportunity to have speech. I thank you. Okay, thank you, fair enough. Yeah, I, I think you are registered for, uh, you're speaking on behalf of an entity which is not registered. I'm sorry, that is not uh, possible on this respect. So I go on to the next. Um, person on the list, which is the Association of Central Asian Migrants. Uh, 
Very sorry, but can I make a point of order? I mean, we nevertheless uh, insist, we repeat uh, that Crimea is an integral part of the Russian Federation and with a view to ensuring pluralism. Registered. You're registered in this place one specific identification. We, are, we cannot discuss anything else. It's a point of how uh, organizations are registered and we have to stick to the organization of registration. I'm sorry. So, Association of Central Asian Migrant followed by Delegation of Czech Republic. Thank you, moderator. I am the head of the Association of Central Asian Migrants in Tajikistan. In uh, our countries, freedom of expression, freedom of the media, and freedom uh, to disseminate information uh, should be an integral part of uh, citizens' rights. Uh, these uh, basic rights are set out in the Constitution, the basic law of Tajikistan. There are constitutional guarantees and legislative guarantees that ensure all uh, standards. There is no problem with the law per se, but what about enforcement? Uh, does uh, that really result in the protection of human rights? Now, unfortunately, uh, any free opinion is being muzzled and certain articles of the code are being used to harass individuals uh, to, um, now fortunately there has been decriminalization of uh, slander, but there is still is uh, criminal liability for slander of uh, head, the head of state or ministers. Uh, so even if a minister is not doing his job properly, it is not possible to criticize uh, any criticism is identified as a form of a slander. And just over the last year, dozens of professional journalists have emigrated and become political refugees in third countries. Yet another significant fact, the state wants to take full control of the media and has illegally decided that all media outlets must uh, uh, submit uh, their publications to the agency Hava, which is controlled uh, by the state before the publication sees the light of day. There is no other country where this is the case. Uh, uh, as a result, uh, citizens uh, talk about uh, the authorities in a whisper because they are being afraid of uh, being overheard. The authorities have become paranoid. They uh, use the pretext of combating terrorism and extremism uh, to attack anyone criticizing the authorities, even if that individual resides outside the borders of the state. Well, in that case, uh, since I'm out of time, just a few recommendations. Uh, the the uh, government of uh, the Republic of Tajikistan should be urged uh, to uh, change the laws uh, governing um, the media and bring them in line with international standards uh, and to uh, cease uh, to intimidate uh, independent media and to give uh, guarantees uh, to uh, journalists uh, that they can act uh, freely and independently, and not to use the combating of terrorism as a pretext uh, to put pressure on journalists and on lawyers who defend them. The delegation of the Czech Republic, followed by Act for America. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The Czech Republic uh, fully herself with the statement of the European Union to which we would like to make some comments in our national capacity. Uh, first of all, we would like to welcome the new representative uh, on the freedom of, of the media, Mr. Arlem Desir, and uh, we would like to thank uh, his team for an excellent uh, job done uh, so far. A tangible expression of our support for the mandate um, of um, uh, the representative on the freedom of, of um, yeah, media. We have repeatedly provided voluntary uh, fund to the safety of female journalists online.
project. Um, we echo the concern expressed by the EU and other partners over the worsening situation with regard to the freedom of expression and opinion in um, uh, some OSC participating states. Uh, we have seen uh, growing persecutions and restrictions on civil society and independent media, as well as intimidation and uh, attacks on journalists, uh, which are not properly investigated by the state authorities. All these worrying tendencies highlight the importance, um, important role of the OSC uh, representative on uh, representative on the freedom of uh, of the media. Uh, for the Czech Republic, the support of uh, independent media has been a long-term uh, priority. The understanding of the importance of the fact-based reporting uh, and independent media has only grown over the last couple of years, as we have been facing numerous disinformation campaigns across the OSCE region. Uh, continuous and uh, significant uh, support to the independent media, especially in the Eastern Europe and Central Asia regions, uh, where they are almost vulnerable, uh, constitutes an important part of our response to those attacks. We would be open to explore new ways to support journalists, editors and bloggers in their everyday struggle to protect the freedom of expression and to provide the readers and followers with uh, verified information. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to echo what has already been uh, emphasized but by Mr. Desir and other colleagues uh, regarding uh, safety of uh, the journalist and, and free journalism. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's now already uh, one minute after six o'clock and uh, the interpreters have kindly to stay for 10 minutes uh, longer so we can do a little bit more uh, work and discussion. So um, there will be also some rights to reply after the next two speakers, which will be end of the list. Uh, but uh, just to inform you in advance, at 10 minutes past, the interpreters will leave. So at that point, uh, we will have interpretation. So next on my list is Act for America, uh, followed by the Union of Informed Citizens, which is the last organization on my list. Okay. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Anderson, Act for America, Minneapolis. I'm sad to say that so far, this has been a very bad year for free media. The problem here is not so much Turkish style state censorship, rather a wall of discriminatory practices against new media. Freedom of expression is being curtailed in many ways censoring or shutting down accounts on Twitter, Facebook, PayPal, and YouTube, manipulating search algorithms, diminishing or cutting sources of funding, overzealous application of copyright law, and more. One recent example was when the mysterious American organization Southern Poverty Law Center published a list of supposed hate group websites but included many pro-constitution and pro-freedom organizations leading to a series of unjustified problems for them. Worse yet, a German court recently convicted independent journalist Michael Sturzenberger for, to six months of prison, suspended, for posting a historical photo of a German officer meeting the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Germany should feel a particular obligation for freedom to document and discuss all horrors of the National Socialist regime. Many aim to limit freedom of expression in OSCE participating states. We call upon the OSCE to guide the states towards protecting freedom first and to find legal mechanisms to counter those who seek to limit it. Act for America Minneapolis therefore recommends that copyright laws get amended with fair use clauses similar to the American one. The OSCE participating states abstain from entering into Facebook style agreements to implement censorship. That OSCE establishes a working group to identify and counter center censorship and discriminatory practices against new media that OSCE Freedom of the Media representative clarifies that the truth can never constitute hate speech. Thank you. 
Um, thank you very much. Um, I was just reminded there is one more on the list. Uh, after the Union Informed Citizen, it will be Centre de la Protection Internationale. Thank you. Thank you very much. Freedom of ex expression, free media are the most important elements of democratic and prosperous society. However, in my country, in Armenia, as well as some other OSC member states, there are serious problems related to free media. Efficient use of propaganda by state began from Russia a few years ago. It was so powerful that its influence on Ukrainian conflict was no less important than that of the Russian troops sent to Crimea and Donbass. All you know about that, and I would like to focus more on state propaganda in, in Armenia. For many years, a propaganda campaign of citizens' disempowerment was carried out in Armenia. Through subtle messages, people were explaining that they cannot influence the state policy, peaceful assemblies or elections. As a result, last year, large scale of society supported the armed group that had taken the path of rebellion. But the most problematic thing is that people completely lost hope for elections. TV stations spread efforts to highlight that there is no alternative to ruling party and nothing can be changed through elections. As a result, people con concluded that the only benefit from the election could be an electoral bribe of 20 euros from ruling party. Through electronic media in Armenia is truly free. All the TV companies present one viewpoint from covering the critics of government. It was demonstrated during the elections in April when popular TV stations did not cover the largest scandals related to systematic electoral violations. Even OSCOD election uh, observation mission recorded that the freedom of broadcast media was restricted by their owners. The state found that public TV is now actively engaging in promoting the so-called nation army concept initiative by Armenian authorities. Within the framework of this propaganda, one can notice oppression of civic consciousness in people, which is being replaced by military consciousness. There are such messages as Armenians should be united against Azerbaijan, the death of a soldier is a natural phenomenon, or the most important role of the woman in society is to give birth to a soldier, values which are alien to civilized people. State-sponsored propaganda presents human rights defenders as agents of Western influence. For years, not a single uh, non-Gongo uh, human rights defender has had a broadcast time on public I'm television, sorry. not even a second. time is uh, I'm, I'm concluding. I'm, I'm finishing. Uh, so, unfortunately, I recently joined the list of countries led by Russia. Those authorities use media to propagate anti-democratic values. This propaganda in long term uh, will seriously damage democracy, stability, human rights in OEC region. We believe that large-scale measures should be taken against the anti-democratic propaganda. Before the large and small propaganda machines have caused an irreversible uh, damage to our values and societies. A moment may arrive when it will Thank be you. too late. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the last on the list is uh, Centre de la Protection Internationale, uh, which will be followed by Right to reply. Uh, first, we'll be on the list Azerbaijan, and if I will ask you to limit your interventions to about one minute, as it's the Certainly. usual practice. Thank you. I represent Centre de la Protection Internationale France, and I would like to raise our concerns regarding the reluctance of some OSCE member states to respect the right to freedom of expression and freedom of media. The countries I would like to talk about very briefly are Azerbaijan, Armenia, Russia, and Ukraine. With your permission, I would like to start with Ukraine. The Ukrainian authorities banned the entrance of dozens of journalists into the country. They also have deported some who kept their professional duties in Ukraine. By all means, Ukrainian government has the right to control the borders and permit or refuse the entrance of people into its territory. However, this ban is discriminative and absolutely disproportionate, as the grounds of the ban are the nationality and the political opinion of, of journalists. <clears throat> This undermines one of the most important roles of the media, to disseminate information even if it is shocking and disturbing. As to Azerbaijan, I would like to emphasize that independent journalists work there under immense pressure and a lot has been said today. Further, I would like to draw your attention 
to the fact that Azerbaijani authorities have blacklisted dozens of foreign journalists who carried out their professional duties in Nagorno-Karabakh. More than 35% of all called blacklisted uh, persons are journalists. In this regard, I would like to refer to the case of Mr. Lapshin. As to the Russian Federation, it should be stated that the situation with free media in this country remains critical. Independent journalists are to face different kinds of pressures. And in this regard, I would like to refer to the case of Ms. Zoya Svetova, a journalist who covers human rights violations in the Russian Federation, including those in Russian penitentiary institutions. Ms. Svetova was to face an 11-hour search of her flat, during which all her journalistic materials were confiscated. Moreover, neither she nor members of her family, who are also journalists, uh, were permitted to leave the flat. The last country I would like to is Armenia, where in July 2016, the life of mass media representatives were endangered by the authorities. More than 20 journalists got injured these days, the majority of whom were wounded as a result of the excessive use of special means and riot police and beaten up by the police officers. After more than a year, no official and no police officer has been charged for these violations. Uh, Fines time were, is... One sentence, thank you. Fines were imposed on some civilians who pleaded guilty for hindering the professional activities of journalists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, as the interpreters are going to be leaving us now at 10 minutes past, probably I would like to just uh, very much thank them for their work um, and making our communication possible and facilitating over the next, over the last um, oh, three hours and plus. So, without further ado, I would like to give the floor first to. Azerbaijan, and then following will be Belarus. Thank you very much. I, first, I would like to congratulate Mr. Harlem Desir and the new appointments at OCE and wish you good luck and fruitful work in the next years. So uh, I want to make short view on the raising issues, and I would like to ask two minutes for us. Um, democracy plays a special role in the development of the, any country. Freedom of speech is fully guaranteed in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a country where internet is completely free. According to the latest information, about 80% of the population of Azerbaijan use the internet. Under such circumstances, there can be the freedom of speech and expression. Today, there operates more than 40 daily, more than 200 weekly and monthly newspapers in Azerbaijan. About 5,000 mass media organizations registered in Azerbaijan. Today, hundreds of media outlets operate in the country quite freely and in safety conditions. Journalists carry out their professional duties without any obstacles. Responsibility in democracy is a very important case nowadays. Each journalist, like each citizen of Azerbaijan, should take into consideration accountability, transparency, responsibility for himself. Crime doesn't recognize a profession. For this reason, we see unacceptable the attempts of some countries and organizations to distort reality in Azerbaijan, unreasonably combining individual situations to harm the country's democratic image, and we call them to refrain from such approach, generally within the process of investigation or decision to require exemption by the some international organization or delegation, it can be valued as a pressure of uh, uh, law enforcement bodies of Azerbaijan. Each delegate should be responsible for the statement. If the delegation or organization thinks that one can slander as much as they want, they think wrong. There are a number of problems in the OEC member states regarding current topic. Time it should be up. not last sentence. It should be noted that during the reporting the period problems today. recorded in Western countries in ensuring freedom of expression include attacks, legislative amendment, ad amendments, and such in, in, incapable with freedom of expression, including libel cases, and etc. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the list is Belarus, followed by Hungary. Thank you very much. Uh, taking, look at <clears throat> sorry, uh, taking into account that uh, some delegations mentioned Belarus in the list of the countries where uh, media freedoms are related, especially uh, rights of uh, um, journalists, uh, freelancers, I would like to mention the following. In comparison with uh, uh, some European countries, uh, I mean EU um, uh, countries, uh, uh, the order of uh, accreditation of um, those persons who uh, work uh, for uh, foreign uh, medias is less uh, strict and uh, quite transparent. 
these persons, uh, they could uh, receive accreditation as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, persons uh, who work for Belarusian national media uh, uh, should uh, have a, uh, uh, an agreement concluded with the administration of the media. This uh, uh, requirement of our legislation uh, that is not contradictive to our international obligations. And uh, um, speaking um, about media freedoms and uh, rights of uh, journalists in general, I would like uh, to uh, say some uh, facts that uh, in um, our um, uh, in Belarus, we have more than 1,600 uh, uh, printed uh, medias, and uh, only uh, 27 of persons of them, they are uh, state-owned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Hungary, to be followed by the Russian Federation. Thank you. Uh, as a starting point, let me emphasize that the fundamental of Hungary is to uh, that everyone shall have the right of freedom to expression. After the adoption of an, of an effective, transparent, and up-to-date new regulation in 2010, the new framework defines and protects editorial and journalistic freedom of expression. After the aforementioned new framework entered into force, the Hungarian authorities engage in a constructive dialogue with all respective international actors, among others, the EU, the uh, uh, Commission uh, Europe, uh, the Venice Commission, and the OSCE. Uh, as a result of these negotiations, the Hungarian government made amendments to legislation in line with the recommendations of our new partners. About the uh, case mentioned in the uh, 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 U.S. speech of Nip Sobacak, the public suspended the publication of the printed and, and online uh, editions of the newspaper uh, as a solely economic decision following the, uh, an accumulation of debt of 5 billion foreigns or 70 million euros in recent years. The government of Hungary has no will, no power to interfere with the business decisions of independent media publishers. In response to the response of uh, Human Rights Watch, I'd like to prom uh, point out that, likewise, the Hungarian government has nothing to do with independent media publishers and outlets publishing lists on any topic or any matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Next is the Russian Federation, followed by Ukraine. Yes, thank you. Uh, a few words about the investigation of crimes against Russian journalists, uh, in, um, including Novaya Gazeta. Novaya Gazeta really raises uh, acute issues uh, like uh, organized crime. Uh, this is the risk that always accompanies this kind of journalism, alas. Uh, that's why Russian uh, legislation has maximum penalties for crimes against uh, journalists and their families, uh, which is especially important. Uh, thanks to the investigation uh, of uh, Novaya Gazeta about uh, groups and social networks related to child suicides, uh, the Russian authorities reacted most uh, directly. Uh, the law has already been adopted to protect children from such uh, risks. Uh, so the authorities are cooperating with Novaya Gazeta in uh, many areas. Uh, at least one year, uh, once a year, uh, President Putin meets with the publishers of uh, variety uh, of uh, Russian media, uh, including the opposition. Uh, for several hours, they're discussing um, informally all the issues, uh, and the editor-in-chief of Nova Gazeta regularly participates in these meetings. Uh, as for the uh, so-called seizure uh, uh, of media space by Russia in the Crimea, we can only remind uh, once again that Crimea was reunited with the Russian Federation as a result of a referendum. That is by exercising the right to self-determination in full compliance with international law. Uh, concerning the situation in uh, southeast of Ukraine, we draw attention to the fact that Ukraine, not Russia, is uh, a party to the ongoing conflict. And uh, the peaceful uh, resolution of this conflict lies in Kyiv's uh, implementation of uh, Minsk agreements. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Ukraine, followed by Greece. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Ukraine is uh, firmly committed to safeguard and promote the freedom of expression and media freedom in the country in accordance with the relevant OEC commitments and international standards. We closely cooperate with the OEC representative of freedom of the media, which provides valuable expertise and assistance in enhancing the implementation of relevant commitments. 
Today, we continue to witness an information war of Russian state-controlled media aimed at destroying peace and security in my country. Anti-Ukrainian falsifications by the Russian media defy norms of journalistic ethics and uh, human morality, crudely incite inter-ethnic hatred. The Russian state media are being widely utilized by the Russian authorities to s disseminate propaganda, incite violence, and promote aggressive nationalism and chauvinism, which runs counter to a number of the OECD principles and commitments, including those in the 2002 Porter document. Responding to today's claims by the Russian delegation and Russian, uh, uh, Russian government-controlled media and journalist union concerning the limitation imposed by the Ukrainian authorities, we wish to point out that it is both the duty and the right of every state to defend itself from an external aggression. The international standards in the field of human rights and fundamental freedoms uh, possibility Time. of limitation and the interest of protection of national security of, of public order. This is, these provisions are fully applicable in the situations of a hybrid warfare, Time including armed aggression against a sovereign state, as in the case of Russia's aggression against Ukraine with the occupation of Ukrainian Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next on my list is Greece, followed by Moldova. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm uh, thankful <clears throat> to be given the opportunity uh, to reiterate what is already known uh, and get things straight on occasions. There is no Turkish minority in Greece, but a Muslim minority comprising of three distinct groups, and this is recognized and set up by the Treaty of Lausanne back in 1923. I want to leave aside all allegations that do not fall within the, today's discussion and concentrate on freedom of expression, and I hope that we'll be able to uh, answer to all other allegations on, on another occasion. Uh, Greece attaches great importance to the implementation, to implementing coherent, comprehensive, and effective policies that guarantee inter alia equality before the law, respect for human rights, and religious freedoms. In this framework, Greek citizens of Muslim faith enjoy the same rights and have the same obligations as all Greek citizens and their religious, cultural, and other rights. Uh, in this context, fundamental democratic values such as freedom of expression in media, existence of pluralistic media, and free flow of information constitute a basic element of the Greek society. More specifically, at least five minority radio stations, seven minority newspapers, and various minority magazines and websites are part of an open and pluralistic media environment in Thrace, which functions without restrictions. Thank Time. you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, next is Moldova, followed by Armenia. Uh, thank you. Freedom of expression constitutes one of the essential foundations of a democratic society and the safeguards to be afforded to the press are of particular importance. In the Republic of Moldova's case, freedom of expression, including media development, has been seen as a major evolution since 2009 and the national authorities are motivated to provide an independent space for all premises for the continuous development of speech and media freedom. On the other hand, it is considered necessary for all broadcasters and act, uh, actors to, of the society without distinction to respect, to respect the legal and ethical frameworks uh, enforced. Today, the Moldovan uh, media market is represented by the, the diversity of opinions and new formats. Uh, the Internet's role as an alternative source of information has increased significant, significantly. In 2009-2010, the um, activity of this means of mass communication, completed additionally by the appearance of new competitive media outlets, has gradually removed the existence of a vacuum in the media market and highlighted the pluralism in this sector. In 2015, there were 59 radio stations and 64 television channels, all broadcast via terrestrial channels, uh, cable networks and satellite, 148 cable TV operators, 17 news agencies, 147 Time. newspapers, and uh, more than 100 uh, journals operating and editing in the country. The access to all media outlets is guaranteed as well throughout the internet. The media content is ensured in the Romanian and minority languages, Russian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Gagos, Yiddish, and Romani languages. Additionally, in uh, the package... Time. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, just a second. Um, as a, a conclusion, uh, I'd like to say that the government of the Republic of Moldova reaffirms its unwavering commitment to freedom of expression and information, freedom of the media, 
and the free exercise of journalism as a fundamental components of a dem democratic society. And the Republic of Moldova will continue to be attached to its international commitments, including those related to freedom of the media and to pay utmost attention to the principles characterizing a democratic society. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, next on the list is Armenia, followed by Estonia on behalf of the EU. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I will try to be brief on three brief uh, points. First, on Lapshin case. Uh, Azerbaijan does not exercise jurisdiction over Nagorno-Karabakh. There are no Azerbaijani borders, let alone border guards within Nagorno-Karabakh. Hence, Lapshin could not violate something that does not exist. Second, there was an allegation coming from an Azerbaijani Gongo, which claims that Armenia killed five Azerbaijani journalists. Overall, 10,000 people from all sides died in the war uh, early 90s in Karabakh, and I would not be surprised that five journalists are among those 10,000 victims. What surprised me that they are compared with the journalists who are suffering reprisals in peacetime in Azerbaijan. Does this indicate that Azerbaijani leadership is fighting a war against free media, a war that can be compared to the NK war in early 90s? And one very brief point on the uh, uh, points made by an Armenian NGO. I think uh, there was a distorted uh, reference to the audio report. Audio report clearly stated that uh, freedom, uh, fundamental freedoms, including expression, uh, freedom of expression, were upheld in Armenia during the elections. And uh, when it comes to psychological pressures of uh, the person who presented his view, uh, I would like to ease that uh, pressure by saying that Armenia will favor uh, civil society and will not make any impediments for their financing from abroad. And he will be also always welcome to come um, to uh, HDM and make critical remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Estonia on behalf of the EU. And the last on the list will be Canada. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. In response to the of the Russian Federation, EU wishes to underline that we reiterate our strong condemnation of the illegal annexation of Crimea and Sevastopol and that the Russian Federation and we will not recognize it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the last on the list is Canada. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Like our EU colleagues, we would also like to reiterate our strong condemnation of the illegal annexation of Crimea and Sevastopol to the Russian Federation which we do not and will not recognize. As such, we therefore regret attempts by participants of this meeting to ensue confusion and use a legitimate opportunity for discussion to raise their points. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are coming to a close for this session. Before uh, concluding, I would just like to give the representative on freedom of the media a very short time to uh, say a few remarks at the end. So I'll keep time. <laughs> One minute. Uh, well, first, I want to thank Franny for the moderation. It's not an easy task, but more profoundly to thank all of you. I would have liked to do it in French. Remercier tous les intervenants, tous les orateurs, les témoignages des organisations non gouvernementales, comme les prises de position des représentants uh, des États. Uh, everybody claimed for free media. That was very interesting even if sometimes mainly in neighbor countries. So that's just a remark. I think we have a common ground that the commitments took by all participating states and the fact that there is vibrant civil society which want to have the possibility to express their views. And it's, clear, it's very clear if I hear all the intervention, and they were very diverse, obviously, that everybody think that Without freedom of opinion, freedom of expression, without a free press, there is no a possibility for a society to develop itself and its aspiration. And we also know that we need this free space of expression for good relationship among the OSC society and the OSC participating state. So I think we have a lot uh, to, to do. This uh, uh, testimony and I obviously will keep in mind the very courageous testimony of those who suffered for, from restriction, of those who spoke about their colleagues still in jail or prosecuted, 
of all the abuse of restriction which could be legitimate when linked to security challenges, but we are, which are not when it's just to try to close media outlet and, and, and free uh, media to, to give their view. I will keep this in mind. I, I keep also in mind the fact that we are still waiting for the outcome of the Chumoya trial near Istanbul today. But it's clear that it also indicates the work we have to do together, all the recrimination, all the demand, all the revendication which were expressed. So I wish we will have the opportunity to work on this, to speak more deeply on many of these issues in side events tomorrow and in the coming days, and of course to pursue the dialogue when we have establishing it with different uh, organizations of journalists which take the floor here today with others uh, with which we could discuss it and uh, try to go from recrimination to cooperation when it's possible, but in any way try to follow up this discussion, very open discussion. What is the more important, of course, very important to answer because sometimes it's necessary, but what is more important is to listen to argument, to listen to uh, what the others are waiting for us. We have a lot to do together. It's absolutely the base of the OSCE uh, functioning to consider that there is no um, um, uh, ingerence in the fact to, 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 to express a view of the situation in the other country. So that's normal. That's a part of the way we try to improve the situation. And uh, I would like that uh, we take seriously the argument and the information given by others. That we, of course, we answer when we, uh, I mean the state, when uh, they consider it's unfair, but they look to the names. They look to the media which have been mentioned. They look to the concrete situation, to the law which has been uh, considered by others uh, are not proportionate or going against uh, the uh, OSC commitment. And, we, uh, and that we try, not just in the time uh, waiting for the next stage deem, but constantly to improve our own situation. And anyway, even in those states which has not, are not being mentioned in this discussion, we know that there is still margin for improvement because we are facing a lot of uh, new problems linked especially to the online media and this vast uh, domain of uh, internet where there is as much fake news than real news or real information, as much propaganda and uh, speech than uh, good uh, face speech. And we have to deal with this reality without trying to censor but trying to answer. So that's uh, what I take from this discussion, it was very long. It could have been longer if there was not uh, the rules and the uh, authority and discipline imposed by Franny. But it was really interesting and even uh, passionate. So thanks a lot for this first occasion to hear from all of you. Thank you very much. And And now just to announce that we are already slightly behind schedule for the reception uh, hosted by the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is here at the venue in uh, meeting room one. So if, please.